say it's time. Ready. It's nothing but hustle inside of the huddle. You know that I grind. A dangerous mind, a weapon of choice when pushing the line. Pushing the line. Go overtime and I won't break when it's crunch time. My end game is number one. Number one. Bet it all, give me my cash. Yeah. Supreme game, can't stop it. Take off like a rocket. No. Break your back, don't bend mine. I'm the one now, you can't hide. Yeah. Legendary like legacy. legacy. This is our moment, our time. This is our moment, our time. This is our moment. This is our time. Time is now. It's time to rise. Yeah. Coming for glory. We ready for war. The city's behind us. We giving you more. We ready whenever. The world is watching. The time is now. No other option. No other way. Play to win the way that we play. Destined for greatness. Born to be great. Ahead of the game. In front of the pack. Leading the way. It's time to reign. The kingdom's here. The kingdom's here. This is our year. Been to the bottom, ain't nothing to fear. We running the game, we running the game. Rushing the field for every yard, on every play. Nobody's safe. Rise when we fall, rise when we fall. But never stay down, but never stay down. The champs is here, champs. Doing it for the ten. This is our moment, yeah. This is our time. The time is now. It's time to rise. This is our moment. This is our time. Time is now. And loaded, it's time for war. Ha! Tear down, kick in the door. Yeah, I want it all, give me some more. Ha! I want it all, give me some more. Pandemonium, I set it off. Yeah. Sacrifice, I bear the cross. Legendary, I'm a big dog. Hard knock on the front line. Pure blood, my bloodline. Headshots the first time. My aim good, bullseye. Warfare, don't play fair. Don't play fair. You not sure? Don't go there. I'm right here. Yeah. No fear, I'm ready to go at top speed. No brick wall can block me. No army can stop me. Yeah. I want it all and I can't lose. I came far and I won't stop. This my time. I pay dues. Yeah. It's war time and I won't retreat. I want it all. Give me some more. I kill them all. Won't taste defeat. No. Now bow down at the king's feet. This time for war. Check out our souvenir booth. Make sure you get in our 50-50 drawing. Do that before intermission. And uh, we'll be right back with you.
that you never thought you'd hear me say I was thinking about going away all these things locked inside the jealousy and your foolish pride well I should have known I should have known you were just taking me for a ride along the way lost control well I'm lucky that I even survived it burn Hey, life is full of hard lessons learned You should have known that by now No, you can't squeeze blood from a stone Little darling You reap what you sow You should have known that by now Oh, you should have known Talk is cheap, life is short In time, it just flies Oh, and dreams captivate Memories of the days gone by I can see in your eyes You're not ready for the goodbye But there's one thing you should know Little darling Seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We talk to them all the time, all over the country. And yes, great show coming up. Congratulations, all the racers. Welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years.
Go to www.sawblade.com. Performance sawing. It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time all over the country. And Yes, great show coming up. Congratulations all the race winners. Welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years. It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time all over the country. And Yes, great show coming up. Congratulations all the race winners. Welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years.
with sport mods and so forth. It's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We talk to them all the time all over the country. And yes, great show coming up. Congratulations, all the winners. Welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years. Markups, no problems. Go to www.sawblade.com. Performance sawing. It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We talk to them all the time, all over the country. And yes, great show coming up. Congratulations, all the race winners. Welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years.
Problems. Go to www.sawblade.com. Performance sawing. It really. We shut it down again. They're locking it up. Stumbled through the gravel. Till we get to my truck You're laughing in the darkness As I fumble for the keys Open up the door and climb up in the seat And I don't know why We can't get it right It's like trouble's gonna find us No matter what we try And I don't know why We can't get it right It's like trouble's gonna find us No matter what we try
For seven bucks an hour at the filling station by the water tower, just checking oil and fixing flats. The kind of kid most folks just looked past. Jill was a local preacher's kid gone wild. Most of the time, her daddy couldn't stand his own child. He'd quote the scripture with an angry shout. Mister, all the reasons she would never turn. 
She was drunk one night on the 4th of July Parked in a pasture with an out-of-town guy He got mad when she said no And he tore her Sunday dress She was wandering alone on the county road When the lights came over the hill That was the moment when Jake met Jim She said, hey, do you need a ride home? She said, go away, leave me alone. But he noticed the bruise and the frightened tears. So there ain't no way in hell I'm leaving you out here. It was raining a little and fixing the storm. And his Mustang jacket looked dry and warm. So she let him wrap around her and she climbed inside. Staying okay, I guess, thank It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time all over the country. And Yes, great show coming up. Congratulations all the race winners. Welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years. Markups, no problems. Go to www.sawblade.com. Performance sawing. It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time, all over the country. And yes, great show coming up. Congratulations, all the race winners.
Hi, welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years. Bladed the track a little bit, took a couple inches off, took a little bit of the wetness off the top, and we're going to pack it in one more time. Just uh, judging by where I'm seated, which is not the greatest of positions, but it looks like it's uh, not throwing up as much mud or anything, so I think the track's looking a little bit better. Notice the Thunderheads off there in turn number two. That's about 20, 25 miles away, and it's not headed in our direction. So it'll be pretty to watch the Thunderheads over there in turn two, but no real danger of rain or anything coming from that direction. But while we have a moment, while these cars are going around, I just want to uh, take a minute to thank all of the sponsors that were able to come together to uh, put this DTK Memorial Number no. 4 on this weekend. So big end of the season race for us here at I-37 in Pleasanton, Texas. It's a two-day race. If you didn't know, we'll be here tonight and we'll be here tomorrow night with the promise of more cars and more action even happening tomorrow night. So. First on the list of sponsors to thank, Race on Texas, raceontexas.com. They cover all of the races here at I-37. You can set your favorite track to be I-37 and Pleasanton whenever you uh, sign up for an account. And uh, we'll get a little bit of a kickback from all of the account signups. And you can go in and watch all of the replays from previous races. A lot of the racers like to go back and kind of review what they did, watch the replays and stuff like that. I do that myself just to see what I did wrong or 
anything like that. But uh, Race on Texas, a valuable tool for racers and, uh, and a nice thing for the fans as well. You can catch the racing action. If you can't be here, you can watch it on your computer at home or from the comfort of your couch if you've got uh, a device connected. They've got apps and stuff like that. So you can pretty much watch racing anywhere at any time. So raceontexas.com. We want to thank the Grass Yard in Delfino Flores out of New Braunfels, Texas. We want to thank Alamo Truck Accessories, Colby Ott out of Divine, Texas, all in designs out of San Antonio, Russell and Anthony Gordon. They've got a new location off of Randolph Boulevard up there in San Antonio. Go check those guys out if you need any sort of design related materials if you need a design worked up they can work with you on creating a design and putting it on just about any medium that you need so shirts hats koozies anything like that go see all in designs they do a lot of the race car wraps out here and the graphics that you see on the race cars and the gordons great to work with they'll take care of you jeff wills with alamo hot rod parts on Centergate Street in San Antonio. Thank you, Jeff Wills, for coming together on the DTK4. I want to thank Dennis Smith with Nogalitos Gear off of New Laredo Highway in San Antonio. Alan Alexander with Hercules Foundation Repair out of Garden Ridge, Texas, up there on the north side. Bob Cat of Pleasanton, Fons Ponsoen. Pleasanton and Jordanton. Go see Fons if you need a Bobcat. You notice a few of the Bobcats rolling the track in and getting the track trimmed up for us tonight. We want to thank uh, Price Chevrolet and LJ M. Ross. Price Chevrolet in Pleasanton, Texas, right off of Oak Lawn, just down the road. Go check out Price Chevrolet if you have a, a need for a new or used vehicle. Just a reminder, all these sponsors came together to uh, put on a nice package to draw in some race car drivers from all over Texas and, and even some beyond. We've got about 100 cars, maybe a little over 100 cars down in the pits. So a nice big lineup. Uh, you know, all of the, the packages and the sponsorships that were put together brought in a whole bunch of cars from all over the place to come race for you tonight. Looks like we're about ready to get uh, hot laps started. So we'll send a few cars out on the track to check out the track, get some practice laps in. A few more sponsors to throw your way. Golden West, James Sullivan, territory manager. Golden West Oil out of San Antonio, goldenwestoil.com. Franco Krulik out of San Antonio, Texas off of Highway 16. Southside Repair, Franco Krulik, thanks for sponsoring. Raymond Lund, Iron Horse RV off of Randolph Boulevard in San Antonio. Tony Bernal, 8T1 Construction, out of Lavernia, Texas. Tony Bernal, Scott Ball, Preferred Motors out of, off of Santa Clara in Marion over by the drag strip. Thank you, Scott Ball, for throwing together some sponsorship for us. Swenson Racing Shocks and Swenson Racing Components, Gary Swenson, they're up there in Bernie. I've mentioned them several times. They've been a long time track sponsor. A lot of the racers around here got shocks on those cars that are from the Swensons and lots of lots of other racing components on these cars. So if you're a racer in need or if you need some consulting, call the Swensons up. They'll be glad to take care of you. Gator Dotson, Dotson Home Moving. If you need a home moved, call up Gator Dotson out of San Antonio. They'll help you out. Brandon Brzezowski, one of our drivers out here, Billy Bob Repair and Tire. They are mobile. So if you need mobile repair, or fleet maintenance equipment, give Brandon a call with Billy Bob's Repair and Tire. They'll come to you. They're out of San Antonio, Texas. 24-hour mobile service. And, of course, Jamie Luna, State Farm, off of uh, Palo Alto in San Antonio. Jamie Luna, longtime sponsor of I-37 Speedway as well. If you're in the need for any sort of insurance, auto, home, renter's insurance, State Farm can take care of you. So thanks, Jamie Luna. So once again, as you go about uh, as you go about your life, 
keep these hardworking businesses in mind and uh, consider using their services in the future. These are the sponsors that keep our sport alive and well and healthy. So please frequent these sponsors when you can. Thanks for all of their support in 2022 and beyond. Looks like first up, we're gonna have some late models. Late model practice, I see the 29 is Jamie Campbell out there. I'll get you some other names here in just a moment. 24 late models checked in. I see the four of Newton Barta, the blue and white number four out of Lytle, Texas. I see the three. Let's see. 3D of Robbie Minton from Lacoste. Lots of other late model names here tonight. There is a winter series that they're going to be participating in. A few of the big races in South Texas. And these late models are going to be touring all across South Texas. I see the 10-4 Brandon Brzezowski out there. We talked to Brandon several times as he's taken it, taken that car to Victory Lane a few times here at I-37 Speedway. I see the 53X of Matt Fox from Kerrville also getting some practice laps out there. That is the black and orange and yellow 53X. Checkered flag in the air for the late models. Some of these guys will be participating. You can find it on Facebook. It's the All-Star Crate Late Model Series. This is the start of their winter series. They've got three events through the next few weeks. They'll head down to Texana Raceway Park on November 18th and 19th. And, uh, December 9th and 10th, South Texas Race Ranch. Lots of big money being put up, $1,000 and $2,000 to win for each night, respectively. And that is the same for tonight. $1,000 to win tonight's event for the late models and $2,000 to win tomorrow night. Owen Pittman is here with that late model series, and we'll have him on the microphone a little bit later tonight to tell you about these racers and some of their sponsors. out on the track looks like the limited late models limited late models getting some practice see the 13m of benjamin mechelcheck we talked to that young man a few weeks back the 99 of alan alexander the 879 of marcus mechelcheck the 14 that is the orange 14 14c that's lawrence mechelcheck driving the orange 14 tonight And the 1T, 
Nathan Titzman out of Corpus Christi. We talked to that young man a few weeks back as well. Keep an eye on that red and white number one T. He knows how to get it done here in Pleasanton, Texas. We talked to him in Victory Lane. I see the double zero. That's Oliver Billingsley from Manchaca, Texas. The 95, Sterling Tausch out of San Antonio, one of your points champions this year. Making it to the big dance, the final race of the year here at I-37. The BD-1, Gilbert Perez out of Corpus Christi. Coming around in turn number four. And the teammate, the BD2, Daniel Preston, also at a Corpus Christi. BD1 and BD2 from the Big Dog Stables. Look like the double okay, Oliver Billingsley checking out the top side in turns one and two, and also in turns three and four. Looks like that was the 18 of Chase Haybear from Lafayette, Louisiana. Chase Bear in the 18, checking out the top side of the track. It's a little slippery up there right now, but he was able to Keep it going in the right direction. Looks like we got some factory stocks out next for practice. There goes the 29K of Dylan Kowalik screaming down the chute, eager to get his chance at some practice laps. 32 factory stocks here tonight. 32, so we will have a B main. Lots and lots of factory stocks. Good to see the factory stocks out in force tonight on a Friday night here in Pleasanton, Texas. The 40 of Dakota Hurley, the 29, Dylan Kowalik. I see the 28 of Mason Castaneda from Orange Grove. I see the black and yellow number 30. That's Memphis Villarreal out of Corpus Christi. The 55C, Chris Clark. Coming to us at a Converse. The 25, red number 25, Nathan Rawhe. Out of Corpus Christi. I see the 02, the red number 02 in turn number four. That's Shannon Maurer out of Victoria, Texas. Fastest mullet in the south. Or so he claims. I see the 92R, Robert Keelick coming around to the Flag stand here, Robert Keelick in the white and turquoise and pink. like another set of factory stocks there. Hey, the uh, black and purple and orange 99 tonight being driven by Jeff Hammett out of Edgewood, Texas. Welcome, Jeff, back to I-37 Speedway. Let's see who else is out there. I see the 777 GWS song. That's the black and red and yellow 777. I see the 39, I believe that's Michaela Trimble. 
coming to us out of Victoria. The 88, Stephen Whitaker the third. Even younger Stevie out with the factory stocks tonight. I see the 82. Donald Kane out of Willis, Texas in the 82 machine. Welcome Donald Kane to I-37 Speedway. 75 of Jerry Miller. Right down the road out of Von Orme. And there's the BD-3. We saw the BD-1 and the BD-2 earlier, and here's BD number three. Ray Allen Kohanic out of Danbury, Texas. Ray Allen picking up a win at uh, Texana Raceway Park last weekend. So keep an eye on that BD3. Looks like they've got that car locked in and quick. I don't think so. And uh, Ray Allen Kohanic, well, he's been in just about every kind of car that you can be in. So lots of experience behind the wheel of that BD3. Seven forty one coming around turn three. That's Cameron Starry out of Corpus Christi, Texas. The young man doing really well for himself in that factory stock. I also see the fifty three Casey Kraus. Well, the one thirty nine Mark Villarreal Jr. That's the black and kind of chrome orange 139 coming around turn four. Mark Villarreal Jr. back in the seat of a race car tonight. I see the 20R, that's Ricky Long out of Floresville. The 91 of Jared Maupin out of College Station. I see the seven. Do not have a driver listed for the seven. Might be the three seven. Let's see if I can get a better look at it here. Seven. Well, I'm not sure. I got the triple seven of Will Spears. And I've got the triple seven X of GW Hessong. That's not going to be confusing. All right. And to finish up practice laps, it's going to be the Texas Dirt Truck Series. Good to have the trucks back here at I-37 Speedway. 16 entries tonight for the Texas Dirt Truck Series. They're finishing up their points battles. The 319, Larry Badgett out of Burnett, Texas, leading them around into turn three. I see the 95 of Lightning McGreen from Huffman, Texas. Yes, you heard that right. Lightning McGreen. I see the 28 of Russ Parker from Seguin. And number seven, that's Lance Chacon out of Atascosa, Texas. Anybody that's driving the Rangers and ATVs that are behind the concession stand, if you're in a Ranger or ATV behind the concession stand, we need you to move those, those vehicles. Please move the Rangers and ATVs that are behind the concession stand. If you can hear me, we need you to move them. Whenever I'm ready, well, I'm ready.
I don't know if these guys are ready, though. <laughs> well, I tell you what. You picked a good night to come out. We're starting a little bit late. We wanted to make sure to get this track as best as we could. And uh, it's looking pretty good at the moment. Still a little bit tacky, but we'll get that reined in through the heat races. Nice thunder uh, thunderheads that you can see off in the distance in turn number two. But we're going to go ahead and start our opening ceremonies here. So if you would, please rise. Remove your hats. And we'll have our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleam. Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. Please do remain standing as we have our opening prayer. God in heaven, you are great and mighty. We thank you so much for the life-giving rain that you've sent. God, we know that, uh, that we need it, so we thank you so much for that. Uh, tonight, we ask that you just be with all of us, be with the racers, give, the, give us wisdom, be with our track officials, be with everyone here. Uh, God, we thank you for getting us here safely, and we ask that you just get us home safely at the end of the night, and uh, maybe even bring us back tomorrow night, God, just to... Uh, Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for sending your son to save us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, folks. I've got a couple things to keep you aware of as we get our night started. Number one, I have a pink bucket down here next to me between the stands. This is a, a little bit of a fundraiser that we're doing donations for track workers. Uh, one of our track workers' wife is fighting breast cancer, so they're looking to recoup a little bit of medical funding for that uh, for one of our track workers so this pink bucket right down here it'll be here all night if you have any spare amount of funds that you can spare just toss that in the red bucket right here if you would thank you very much and I'll have that right down here as you come down to the concession stand looks like we're gonna get our night started off with the limited modifieds limited modifieds heading down the chute Give them a wave as they come down the chute. Limited Modified, sponsored by Swenson Race Products. We mentioned the Swensons earlier. Couple different heat races. We're going to take them eight laps. And uh, eight cars scheduled for this first heat race. We've got the 99 of Alan Alexander on the pole. Outside of him, the 1T of Nathan Titsman in the red and white 1T. The 73 of Derek Gonzalez, row number two, along with the 14C of Lawrence Mekelchek returning to the driver's seat. The 879 of Marcus Mekelchek right behind him in row number three. And then uh, cousin Benjamin Mekelchek right there in the 13M, the green and white. Lots of Mekelcheks right there. I, I wonder if they got together and planned anything. Bringing up the rear in the back row, the H14, Heath Stewart, and the 18 of Chance A. Bear. 
coming all the way from Louisiana. Keep an eye on that 18. We'll see how he does. Lights are out around the track. We're going to go green this time by. All eyes on the 99 of Alan Alexander, that beautiful blue and white car. As he leads him around, he's going to look for the green flag to get our night started and lifts the throttle. And here we go, folks. Heat race number one. Alexander leads him around, tiptoes through one and two. Nathan Titzman on the top gets a good run down the back stretch. We got a couple Mickle checks battling for third and fourth. That's Marcus on the bottom, Lawrence on the top, father and son duo. Seventy-three of Derek Gonzalez, kind of moving backwards there. He's top to bottom with the 13 of Benjamin Mechelcheck. That's a battle for fifth place right now. The 14 of Lawrence Mechelcheck had to get on the binders coming out of turn number four, running out of real estate real quickly. That orange number 14 machine. He swaps places with the, uh, the 879. Looks like they're going to try to make the top work. The 879 of Marcus Mekulczyk once again kissing the top lip up there in turns one and two, but holding on. Now he's caught up to the back bumper of the one team, Nathan Titzman, and gets around the outside of turn four. Oh, look out, the 879 of Marcus Mekulczyk barely holding on as he rides around the top of this racetrack. He is making it work, but man, it looks tricky up there. Two laps to go this time by the 99 of Alan Alexander, firmly in control of this first heat race, but the 879 of Marcus Mekulczyk is trying to catch up to him. We'll see if he has enough time. He's got two laps to go. I don't know if that's gonna be enough time for the 879 to catch up. The one T of Nathan Titzman saw what the 879 was doing and moved up to the top as well. But it may be too little too late to catch up now. White flag in the air. The 99 of Alexander still firmly in control. The 18 of Bear sounds like he's having a little ignition problems coming down here on the front stretch. Checkered flag to the 99 of Alexander. Second goes to the 879 of Marcus Mekulczyk. And then the younger cousin of 1T, Nathan Titzman. Lawrence Mekulczyk in the 14, bringing it up in fourth. And uh, keeping it all in the family in the top five, the 13M of Benjamin Mekulczyk rounds out your top five. All right, we're going to send another limited modified heat race down the chute. But once again, give these guys a wave as they come down. It's probably about the only time they can see you in the stands, so let them know that you can see them and that you're cheering for them. Another eight cars, and we're going to take them eight more laps the distance. Number two, lineup looks like this. The 11T, Tom Grothy, who's starting on the pole outside of him. 
The always fast number 26, J.J. Jennings. Row number two will be the double OK, Oliver Billingsley, alongside the 95S of Sterling Tausch on the outside. Row number three will be the BD2, Daniel Preston, alongside the 79 of Joe Armandia. Joe Armandia, good to see him back here at the track. Row number four will be the 14 of Trent Beaver. Keep an eye on that young man. He's always fast. And then right next to him, the BD1 of Gilbert Perez the third. Lots of fast names in this bunch. Curious to see how it's going to play out. The lights are out around the track. Attention drawn now to the 11T of Tom Grothews as he leads them around turns three and four looking for the green flag. And there they go. Two by two. And maybe three by three. Oh, a little bump up. Happened up there in turn one and two. The double OK of Billingsley. Had a little trouble getting around turns one and two. Moves backwards quickly. Everybody else able to get around safely for the moment. The 11 of Grothy is working his way around the top. The 26 of Jennings is trying it on the bottom. We'll see if he makes the choice to move down yet again. It looks like he stayed on the bottom this time. The BD1 and the BD2 teammates battling down the back stretch. The side by side, that's the battle for third. Daniel Preston and Gilbert Perez. Yeah, third place on that lap to the BD2 of Daniel Preston. But they are still side by side. Gilbert Perez on the top, Daniel Preston on the bottom. Once again, BD2, Daniel Preston with the ever so slight advantage. Holding his position in third place. Tom Grothews in the 11. Still your leader for the moment, but the 26 of Jennings trying his best to track him down. Our flagman Jeremy Hernandez says two laps to go. Two more laps for the 11 of Tom Grothews. Looks like the BD3 of Gilbert Perez has now moved up into that third position. White flag in the air. Everybody's still spread out around the track. A couple car lengths between each car at this point. Here comes the 11 of Tom Grothews looking for the checkered flag, and he's going to see it with a little bit of lap traffic right there at the end for the 11 of Grothews. Tom Grothews in the 11, able to hold on and navigate that lap traffic. And he's gonna take a, a little bit of a victory lap here with those lap traffic cars, just to make sure. Tom Grothews leaving nothing on the table tonight, taking no chances. That's gonna do it for the limited modifieds. We'll see their feature race later tonight. All 16 cars, looks like they made it safely through, so Barring any major mechanical ca catastrophes, we'll see all of those guys later in the future.
All right, next up, it looks like we're going to start our heat races for the factory stocks. Factory stocks going to start heading down the chute. And I'm going to check out what our lineups look like here. I mentioned earlier that there are 32 factory stocks checked in tonight. So we're going to have four heat races of eight cars each. That worked out nicely for our mathematics. All right. And because I can't read too well, uh, thank you, Mr. Jeremy, for reminding me. We're going to take the top three out of each heat. Top three, so that'll be the, the number you want to pay attention to. Shannon Maurer, Casey Krause, Mark Villarreal, Alan Torres, James Stanfield, G.W. Hetzong, Will Spears, and Memphis Villarreal in heat race number one. Got a whole bunch of a dust up there. The 94 of Alan Torres all over the back bumper of the 02 of Shannon Maurer. Still all over the back bumper. Man, that looks like some of the NASCAR stuff we saw last weekend. My goodness. Looks like the 53 of Krause moved up to the top lane and takes over the lead from the second position that he started in. So Casey Krause will bring him around for the next lap. Looks like the 30. Well, let's see. The 139 of Mark Villarreal gets passed by the 30 of Memphis Villarreal. I'll try to keep that together tonight. The yellow and black number 30, that's Memphis Villarreal, takes over second from the 139 of Mark Villarreal. Triple seven X of GW Hessong. You've heard that name before. Hessong battling it now. Right now he's in the top five, trying to get up to the top three once again. The top three are gonna transfer into the feature race, everybody else will have to go through a B main. The 777 of Hessong trying to pin the 94 of Alan Torres up to the top. Trying a little pick and roll action right now. Trying to get the 94 out into a lane that he doesn't want to be in. But that is the battle for fourth. And right now, third is where they want to be. The 94 Torres breaks loose a little bit on the top side. Now finds himself in fourth and moves down to the bottom. Torres once again all he can see is the back bumper of the 139 of Mark Villarreal. He tries to move around to the top side yet again. Now coming around turn four on the top and looking at the white flag. The 30 of Villarreal takes over the lead from the 53 of Kraus. Now passing lap traffic is the 53 of Cap Kraus as he comes down the back stretch. The 94 of Torres moves up into the third position. Let's see if he can hold on to it. One more turn to go. Looking at the checkered flag. Yes, sir. The 94 of Alan Torres secures his spot in the feature. That will mean that the triple seven X of GW Hessong will have to face the B main later tonight. The, the 139 of Mark Villarreal Jr also going to have to do a B-Main. The 780 of James Stanfield, that's the white and black 780 that I was missing earlier, will have to go to a B-Main as well as the 02 of Shannon Maurer. Shannon Maurer started this one on the pole and went backwards real quickly. He'll have some adjusting to do to get that car figured out before the B-Main later tonight. Heat race number two on the factory stocks. 
Sponsored by All In Designs. Heat Race 2, lineup looks like this. The 28M of Mason Castaneda starting on the pole. The 66 of Johnny Torres with a new wrap on that car. The purple and green, 66. Keep an eye on that one. Row number two, the B4 of Billy Roschetti, the fourth, along with the 99 of Jeff Hammett. That'll be row number two. Row number three, the 38 of Josh Sewell, alongside the 37 of Evan Lambert. And row number four, the 29K of Dylan Kowalik, and the 75 of Jerry Miller. Looks like a little bit of a lineup change. We're going to put the B4 of Billy Roschetti, the Ford, to the back. Roschetsky. There, there we go. Roschetsky. Looks like the lights are still on, so we're going to get at least one more parade lap out of these guys as we get our lineup figured out. So the 38 of Josh Sewell will move up into row number two. That'll put the 29K of Dylan Kowalik in row number three. And that'll rotate the B4 of Reshetsky to the back row as he gets a little bit more experience. I believe that is an intentional choice. And uh, probably a good one because right now that track is looking particularly tricky at the moment. Still a little bit slick out there. Lights are out around the track. So the 28 of Mason Castaneda leads him around into turn four and looks at the green flag. Here we go. Heat race number two for the factory stocks. Johnny Torres moved up to the top. Oh, look out. Four wide coming out of turn two. We got to throw a yellow. There was a little bit of contact out there, and it looks like the 75 of Jerry Miller. Uh, I lost a wheel, lost a tire, lost something. So he will try to make his way down into the pits, limping on three legs. Looks like track officials going up to... Uh, check on the debris up in turn number two. So we will uh, we will have a full restart. No lap scored on this one. 75 of Jerry Miller was uh, starting in the last position, in the eighth position, so everybody else will be in the exact same spot they were in before. So once again, this will be a full race restart. We'll see him lined up two by two. Lights are out around the track. Mason Castaneda once again leads him around turn three and four. Going to be looking for that green flag. Starter going to start this race unless he pulls it out. And there he goes. Johnny Torres with a slight advantage going into turns one and two. Pulls ahead of the 28 of Mason Castaneda heading down the backstretch and we go three wide down the backstretch. The 99 of Hammett, the 29 of Kowalik still side by side as they come out of turn four. The 38 of Josh Sewell drops back says, I'm not going to mess with three wide. It's way too early in the race to mess with that bunch. So once again, keep your eye on the top three. Right now, the 29 of Dylan Kowalik appears to be on the button. And uh, he's side by side with the 99 of Hammond. Check that. 29 of Kowalik held the third place. Then the 99 and the 38 now battling it out for fourth position. But they're going to want to do all they can to get up to that number 29. That's where they want to be to get into the top three. The 29 of Kowalik trying to make the middle work. 
but not having much luck at the moment. Looks like the top side is where the traction is. We're four laps down and four more to go. Looks like the 29 of Kowalik threw it into turns one and two and made something stick. We'll see if he can make the bottom line work as they come to the flag stand. Oh, yellow flag. The advantage by a bumper went to the 28M of Mason Castaneda on that lap. Castaneda will be scored in the second position, Kowalik in third. But now we are going to have our first restart of the night. We'll have our Texas style restart. There's the 37 of Evan Lambert getting that car corrected and back in the right direction. So, Texas style restart looks like this. The car scored in position number one will get to jump out front and choose when to start the race. Car scored in second position will get to choose whether he wants to be on the top or the bottom. He will have the choice, so that choice going to the 28 of Mason Castaneda. Looks like he's choosing the bottom, which will put the 29 of Dylan Kowalik on the top for this restart, and they will start side by side. Interesting choice there by the 28 of Mason Castaneda. He believes that the bottom line is where he wants to be. So far from what I have seen, the top line is kind of working out a little bit better, but that's not where the 29 of Kowalik has been running. So maybe a little bit of head games being played right here. Once again, keep your eye on the top three as we look for the green flag, and here we go again. The top five, all sorts of close together, getting real friendly up there in turn number two. Now the 38 of Josh Sewell trying to make a, a little bit of run for it himself, seeing if he can work on the bottom. Dylan Kowalik now challenging for the lead, making the bottom work. Kowalik just throwing it into turns one and two, getting that car real sideways and making it stick. Impressive maneuvering from that young man as we have two more laps to go. Kowalik now with the lead. Kowalik in the 29 by a fender. Working against the 66 of Johnny Torres. Now Johnny Torres is going to squeeze him as they come into turn three. We'll see who gets to the flag stand first. Give it to the 29 of Kowalik. Now the 28 Emma Mason Castaneda going to try to push the 66 of Torres up to the top. He's got two more turns to try to make a move. Mason Castaneda now goes to the top side. Here he goes to work against the 66. Who's it going to be? Coming to the checkered flag, Johnny Torres. Take second place. Mason Castaneda in the 28M still makes it into the feature race. Scored in the third position. The 38 of Josh Sewell will have to face a B main along with the 99 of Hammett. Then the uh, 37 of Lambert, the B4 of Reshetsky, the fourth. A couple others fell off. The 75 of Jerry Miller. Looks like he'll have to face a B main if they can put that car back together. Heat race number three coming at you. Starting on the pole for this one, young Stephen Whitaker III. He's been racing pure stocks down at South Texas in Texana. Now bumping up to the factory stocks for the big 
feature uh, ending season ending races in the 88. He'll start alongside the 92R of Robert Keelick. Row number two will be the 55C of Chris Clark going hoodless tonight. He'll be alongside the 3D of Johnny Walker Brown. Then the 741 at Cameron Starry starting in row three alongside the young lady, the 39 of Michaela Trimble. Row number four will be the 20R of Ricky Long and the 15L of Daniel Lopez bringing up the rear. So keep an eye on the 88, keep an eye on the 741, those two young guys battling it out. Along with the young lady, the 39 and Michaela Trimble. Good to see her back at I-37. Lights are out. We're going to go green flag. Whitaker the third lifts the throttle and looks for the green flag. Here we go. Whitaker the third leads them around and then a whole bunch of cars packed in behind him. The 55 of Clark looks like he's off the pace just a little bit and goes down into the pits. He's gonna pull it off for the heat race. Seven cars left and we're taking them eight laps. One lap down, seven more to go. BD3, Johnny Walker Brown challenging the 92 of Robert Keelick. Pushes the 88 of Whitaker the third up to the top side of the track. BD3 and 88. Oh, look out, the three. Almost goes around and turn number four. He holds on to it. Little bit of rubbing going on right there between the 92 and the 39. Just a little bit of fender rubbing. Maybe a donut or two, nothing big. Johnny Walker Brown in the three, breaking away from the rest of the pack, the 92 of Keelick. Here comes the 741 of Starry, gets a good run coming out of turn number two, working his way around the top. He finds himself now in the top three. Starry on the top, moves up into the second position and sets his sights on the 3D. Of Johnny Walker Brown, does he have enough time as laps wind down? Just a few more laps to go. Right now, your top three going into the feature the three of Walker Brown, the 741 of Starry, and the 92 of Keelick. We three wide. Three wide down the back stretch. Whitaker, Trimble, and Lopez. A little bit of a miss up there. Trimble and Whitaker battling there side by side against Lopez. Lopez moves up, but still he's in the fourth position. He's got one more to go before he makes it into the feature. Coming down the back stretch and out of turn number two, we got a good battle between first and second, Cameron Starry and Johnny Walker Brown. This is for position in the start of the feature race. Checkered flag coming out for the 741 of Starry. Taking the heat race victory. Johnny Walker Brown taking second. The 92R of Keelick taking third. So those three will move up into the feature race. Lopez, Trimble, Whitaker, and the 20 of Long. They'll be shuffled down into the B main later tonight. So we will see those cars again. Heat race number four coming down the chute. Give them a wave. Well, that was interesting. I've never seen a car try to warm up the tires in the chute before, but the, uh, the 82 of Donald Kane 
getting the tires warm as he came down the chute. But starting on the pole, the 34H of Ryan Doyon. Outside of him, the always fast, the 91, Jared Maupin. Row number two, keep an eye on this young man, Dakota Hurley in the 40, the blue and white and red. Donald Kane in the 82 machine starts outside row two. Row number three, the, the 41 of Franco Krulik and the 44K of Michael Kielik. Frank O'Krulik, Michael Kielik. That's hard to say. Say that three times fast. Row number four, the 25R, Nathan Rahi, and the BD3 of Ray Allen Kohanek. Keep an eye on that machine as well. Lights are out around the track. We're going to take them green flag right here, right now. There goes the 34H of Ryan Doyon. Two by two, they go into turns one and two. The 91 of Maupin. Gets a little mixed up in turn two. Has to get off of the throttle. Holds on to it now. Moves ahead of the 34H. Who's it going to be to take lap number one? Give it to the 91. 91 of Maupin having all sorts of problems with turn number two. He gets a little bit tight through the middle of turn number two. He's got to get off the throttle and loses a whole bunch of momentum, but still holding on to the top spot for the moment. Once again, the 91 of Maupin having all sorts of trouble in turn two, but he's able to hold on to it and hold his position in first place. The 34H of Ryan Doyon trying to work his way around him. Now up to the top three, the 82 of Donald Kane. Here comes Kane trying to figure out how to get around the 34H. He's in the third position. That is the bubble. That's the place you want to be, top three. Four laps down, four more to go. The BD3, Ray Allen Kohanek. In the fourth position right now, trying to get around the 82. He's going to try to make a move on the bottom coming out of turn four. Can he make it stick? Not that time. The BD3 of Kohanek is going to try to pin the 82 to a lane that he doesn't want to be in. Oh, it looks like they almost made contact down the back stretch. Good battle for third position right now as we come to two more laps to go. Give that time by to the BD3, Ray Allen Kohanek. Kohanek with a little bit of a slide job to get up in front of the 82 of Donald Kane. They're coming around to the white flag and new third position goes to the BD3 of Kohanek. Coming out of nowhere, the 41 of Franco Krulik now has one lap to try to get around two cars. I don't think he's got enough time. Checkered flag coming out for the 91 of Maupin, the 34H of Doyon, and the BD3. Ray Allen Kohanek making his way up to third place and sneaking into the feature as he got around the 82 of Donald Kane with a little Slide job maneuver up in turn number two to get his, uh, his back bumper right in front of that 82 machine. So good veteran maneuver right there for the BD3 to make it up into the feature race. Well, that's going to do it for the factory stocks. Heat races. We'll see a B main later tonight. Factory stocks sponsored by All In Designs. Next up down the chute, as you can see, we've got the... Sport Compacts. Two heat races for the Sport Compacts. We'll take them eight laps each. I got eight cars scheduled for this first heat race. Couple new cars coming to the track right here. I've got the 03G of Gabriella King. The young lady going to start us off. The 55 Fireball Riker Hernandez starting outside row one. 
The 3M of Mark Earl starting inside row number two alongside the bright pink 76Y. That's Donald Lewis. The turtle Rod Tate picking up two wins and a couple back-to-back -back weekends. The green and black and white number 70. Keep an eye on Rod Tate. He's got that machine figured out. Starting outside of him, the young lady Sam Walker in the 3%. And then finally, the eight of Hadley Johnson and the four of Zach Dotson. They will start in the back row. A couple, couple new cars, although I believe I've seen that four machine before, driven by somebody else. Lights are out around the track. We're going to go green flag this time by. All eyes on the 03G of Gabriella King. Going to lead them around to the green, and here we go. A little bit of contact right there between your top two. Side by side, four tires are better than, eight tires are better than four, that is. There goes the 3M of Mark Earl jumping up into second position, getting around the 03 of Gabriella King. Oh, look out! Rod Tate goes after the infield tractor tire, trying to hold on to that machine. We stay green. Good maneuvering by the 70 to keep that thing in the right direction as he took out the infield tractor tire. That's hard to do. The 3M of Mark Earl going to lead us around for this next lap. The 55 of Riker Hernandez. And the 03G of Gabriella King, your top three. Looks like the 3% of Sam Walker maybe having a little bit of trouble with that machine. Looks off the pace to me. So she's going to be lap traffic for the 3M of Mark Earl. That quickly, we're four laps down and four more to go. Mark Earl and the 3M still firmly in control of this heat race, followed by the 55 of Riker Hernandez. Oh, look out! The 03G of Gabriella King almost goes over the top berm in turn number two. She held on to it, keeps it in the right direction. Lap traffic now for your leaders. Mark Earl in the 3M getting around a whole bunch of lap cars. Got around the 70, got around the four. Two more laps to go. The 55 of Riker Hernandez now coming up on lap traffic. Followed by the 03G of Gabriella King. the eight. Oh, Hadley Johnson was battling side by side with your leader down the front stretch. Almost goes over turn number one. Holds on to it. White flag coming out now for everybody else. No, sorry. Checkered flag coming out for the three of Mark Earl. White flag for the eight. White flag for the four. Checkered flag for the 55 of Hernandez. White flag for the 70 of Rod Tate. Checkered flag for the 03 of Gabriella King. White flag for the 3%. And I believe in fourth position, the 76Y of Donald Lewis. Well, that's going to do it for heat race number one for the Sport Compacts. we got one more heat race coming at you.
Heat race number two coming at you. Just got a message from my good buddy Milton Hope, fellow track announcer. You guys remember Milton out here? He, uh, he let me know that uh, Gabriella King, she likes to go by Gabby, one of, those, uh, one of his racers up at Cotton Bowl. She came down to check us out here at I-37. Thank you, Milton. We'll go with Gabby King. I like to uh, go with everybody's preferred name if possible. So if I mess up a name or if you know that they've got a, a different preferred name, just let me know and I will make note of that. But thanks, Milton. Good to see your name again. Here we go for heat race number two. The 88 of Justin Sitterly going to start us off on the pole alongside the 28 of Levi Hernandez. The 33 of Jamie Garner will be alongside the 21T of Sean Tracy. Then we've got the 67L of Sean Leisure coming back to us. I see the 32 of Josh Garcia going to be on his outside. And the 83 of Donald Kinneman going to start in the back. Here we go, green flag. Sean Leisure in the 67L moves up to the top quickly, and we go three wide coming out of turn two. Leisure moves up and moves around that traffic and sets his sights on your leaders. The 28 of Hernandez now stuck in the middle of a sandwich with three wide coming out of turn four. Leisure, Hernandez, and Sitterly still three wide coming out of turn two. All three of those cars putting on a good show for us right now. Looks like the 67 Elise are going to get the benefit of the preferred line around the top. And it looks like he's going to lead us around for this next lap. There goes the 67 of Sean Leisure. Levi Hernandez now in the 28 going to come under fire from the 88 of Sitterly. Sitterly going to move to the bottom and try to push the 28 up to a not preferred line, see if he can get him thrown off and somewhere where he doesn't want to be. Here comes the 32 of Josh Garcia. Trying to work his way around the bottom against the 88 of Sitterly. He pulls up alongside him. Who's it going to be coming to the flag stand, though? Give it to the 32 of Garcia. Garcia takes over third position, now goes to work on the 28 of Hernandez. Hernandez and Garcia side by side going into turn number three. We'll see if Garcia can make it work on the bottom. Pushes Hernandez up to the top of the track. And give it to Garcia. Garcia now still working against the 28 of Hernandez. Has not completed that pass fully just yet. So here comes the 28 of Hernandez. Gets a good run. Coming out of turn number four. Not going to be enough this time around. And now here comes the 88 of Sitterly. Sitterly with a full head of steam coming towards the back bumper of the 28 of Hernandez. White flag going to come out this time. One more lap to go. We'll see if there's enough time for any more mixing around to happen. Good distance putting on between the rest of these competitors. Leisure now going to see the checkered flag as he comes around. Good run by Sean Leisure in the 67L on his return to I-37 Speedway. Joshua Garcia in the 32 picks up second. Levi Hernandez in third. Justin Sitterly in the 88 will pick up fourth. 21 to Tracy. The 33 at Garner. Not used to seeing the silver bullet back there at Garner. 
perhaps this track not to his liking at the moment. But we'll see what they can do in the future as this track continues to change. The slick stuff gets packed in. We saw that the top line was preferred for the limited modifieds. And then, uh, well, everything kind of changed after that. Factory stocks were maybe sort of in the middle. And uh, everybody else was kind of on the bottom. Here come the Texas dirt trucks. Man, it's good to see the dirt trucks back here at I-37 Speedway. I will get your lineup here for the Texas Dirt Truck Series making their final points run here at I-37 Speedway tonight. There's a couple different points battles happening. And I'll try to keep you up to date on those. I believe the 91 of Maupin will be battling for the lead with one other truck. We'll have the 21T of Sean Tracy starting on the pole. Outside of him, the 693 of Colton Borlas. We'll see the 52 of Donald Mick on the inside of row two with the 28 of Russ Parker. The double zero Buster Dean will be in row three alongside the 416 of Aaron Letty. We'll see the 19 of Jarrett Barber alongside the 01T of Adolph Tracy in row number four. And it looks like there's a little bit of a lineup change here. I've got eight cars scheduled, and I see seven on the track. It looks like we're missing the 52 of Donald Mix. So the OO of Buster Dean will move up into row number two. As the lights are out, we're about to go green. All eyes on the 21 of Sean Tracy. Brings them around to the green flag. Here's your first heat race for the Texas Dirt Truck. The 21 of Sean Tracy gets a good jump and puts that big back bumper right in front of the 693 of Borlas. The 28 of Parker moves up to the top, gets around Borlas for the moment for lap number one. All right, I just got word that that is a, the, the 22, that might be Adam Tracy. I have 21T scheduled on my books, but my apologies if we got that wrong. It's one of the Tracys, so we'll just say Tracy for the rest of the night. Parker in the 28 takes over the lead from Tracy in the 22. And we've got the 416 of Aaron Letty trying to make his way around the outside, battling for second. 693 of Borlas moves back to fourth. Four laps down, four more to go for your leader. Right now, the 28 of Russ Parker putting some distance on the rest of the field. Once again, the 28 of Parker now coming around to a couple sticks in the air. Oh, a little bit of contact between the 22 and the 416. They're side by side coming out of turn two and down the back stretch. Getting a little western out there. And the 416 of Letty comes out the victor on that lap. Letty now sets his sights on the 28 of Parker. Letty looks like he's got about half a lane, a little bit higher than the 28 of Parker. This time Parker moves up, Letty moves down.
The 22, Tracy, trying to make his way around the bottom, but it's just not sticking for him. He falls back to third place again. Checkered flag coming out for the 28 of Parker. Tracy on the bottom with a slide job in the heat race. Look out, folks. The 22, Tracy pulls out the slide job in turn number four, takes over second position from the 416 of Aaron Letty. Oh, look out! A little bit of a uh, little bit of bug spray out of the double zero. That was intentional. He's he's not burning that motor down that I know of anyway. Just a little bit of bug spray for turns one and two. The mosquitoes are out in full force back there. But a good run right there for heat race number one for the Texas Dirt Trucks. Heat race number two coming at you. I want to give a shout out to my buddy Phil Whipple just sent me a, a message here and like I said earlier I do like to try to get everybody's names correct uh, so I've learned something new today the 319 Larry Baggett I've been saying it as Badgett all along it's Larry Baggett thanks for the correction Mr. Phil appreciate you so, heat race number two for the Texas Dirt Trucks. I've got the 22 of Adam Tracy scheduled to start on the pole, but I think we just saw him. I've got the four of Trailer Caulfield scheduled for outside row number one. Lance Chacon in the seven, inside row two, starting alongside the 95 of Lightning with Green. Larry Baggett in the 319 will be inside row three, alongside the five of Daniel Gadet. And in row number four, the 91 of Jared Maupin will start alongside the 41 of Riker Hernandez, the fireball in a Ford, I think. I haven't checked the distributor placement in that truck, but I believe it's a Ford anyway. Riker Hernandez giving the Texas Dirt Truck Series a try. Here we go, green flag. The four of Trailer Caulfield jumps out to the early lead. We go three wide for the battle for second, third, and fourth. The 91 of Maupin making his presence known on the bottom side of this track. Still three wide, man. Throw a blanket over the top five right there. The 91 of Maupin, the four of Caulfield. And the, the 41 of Riker Hernandez throwing himself up into the mix. Losing the fender. Riker Hernandez in the 41 lost the fender up there in turn number four. We're going to throw the yellow flag. Do not want to see that fender thrown up into anybody's radiator. We will throw the yellow flag for that debris in turn number four. We will see what the officials call on this one. There was a little bit of contact that uh, caused that fender to come off, so we will see if they will score that yellow flag against the 41, or if they'll let him keep his spot. Riker Hernandez moving forward in a hurry. He started this thing in eighth position, now finds himself up in the top four. Fender on racetrack, F-O-R, Fender on racetrack dirt. That's what Ford stands for tonight. Fender on race, race dirt right there for the 41. We'll see if he keeps his spot though. It looks like they've got him in the fourth position for the moment. And actually, looks like they're gonna score him in third position. 
Sometimes it's hard to tell from where I'm sitting on who's making contact and such, so my apologies. I do happen to uh, get some calls wrong here and there. I'll call out something that I got wrong a little bit later tonight for the late models. I want to issue an apology for one of my fellow racers. Well, here we go for our uh, restart. The 95 of Lightning McGreen going to jump out to the front along with the 91 of Moffitt. Maupin goes around on the top side. Lightning McGreen falls back to second. We got a battle for third between the four of Caulfield and the 41 of Riker Hernandez. Oh, look out, the seven of Lance Chacon tried to eat an infield tractor tire. Did not work out well for him, so that seven machines moves backwards quickly. Here comes the 91 of Maupin, now firmly in control of this heat race. The 95, Lightning McGreen still holding firmly in second. The four of Trailer Caulfield in third, but coming under fire from the 41 of Riker Hernandez. Two laps to go. No competition right now for the 91 of Jared Moffitt. Battle for second brewing with the 95 and the four. The four of Trailer Caulfield trying to make the bottom side work. They're gonna look at a white flag this time by. We'll see if Trailer Caulfield pulls out the bumper. Oh, the 319 of Larry Baggett goes around in turn number four. I think we're gonna have to throw the yellow and we do. Oh my goodness, that is not what the 91 of Maupin wanted to see at this moment. On the white flag lap, we're gonna erase all of that lead that he had. So the 91 who was leading by a couple turns now will have to face a restart. And we're gonna bunch all of these trucks up right to his back bumper. Looks like maybe the seven of Lance Chacon having some problems. I see him parked up there at the entrance to the pits. Flagman trying to get these guys in the right lineup so we can set them two by two for the restart. I believe the seven of Chacon may be looking for a little help. I see him moving backwards on the pit ramp and he might, no, well, maybe he changed his mind. Looks like the seven is back out onto the racing surface. And well, trying to get a, maybe the attention of a track official to come to the seven and have a little chat. So we'll get this figured out. The 91 of Jared Maupin will now face the 95, Lightning McGreen, the four of Trailer Caulfield, right on his back bumper. So for the restarts, once again, the truck scored in the second position will get to choose whether they're gonna start on the top or the bottom. Looks like the 95 of McGreen choosing to start on the top rather than the bottom. Gives the bottom to the four, Trailer Caulfield. Lights are out around the track. Here comes the green flag. One more lap to go. We got a green white checker. White flag once again for the 91 of Maupin. Oh, almost gets a, up into the front stretch wall. 
He was able to hold on to it. And look out, we got another yellow. The seven of Lance Chacon decided to uh, park up there in turn number three. He decided that the scenery was looking pretty good. Now, I'm just kidding. It looks like he definitely had a problem with that truck. Of course, nothing intentional there, but sometimes you just don't know and you gotta give it a try, especially on the final points night. So we're going to get Lance Chacon and the seven up on the hook. Our first catch of the night. Well, maybe not. There we go. No uh, backup cameras on our uh, tow truck, I suppose. Needed a little bit of help there to get the seven machine on the hook, get him towed out of the way. Chris, it looks like that must have been the checkered flag there, huh? Well, I suppose so. I guess we're just going to leave it finished like that. It's good to hear your voice, Mr. Owen. Welcome back to I-37 Speedway. I'm going to turn the call for the All-Star Crate Late Model Series over to Owen Pittman while I take a little bit of a break. So take over, Mr. Owen. It's good to have you back. Thanks, buddy. Good to be here. Uh, good to listen to you tonight. Uh, keep up the good work, man. Uh, Crate Late Model Series coming out next. On the pole in the five car out of Floresville is going to be Ryan McDonald in a GRT. Sponsored by GGR, Reflective Wrecker, and Buggy Warehouse. Outside. One of the toughest competitors you'll see here this weekend. Out of Boyd, Texas in the 26, that's Dean Abbey. He's in an MB Customs chassis. Sponsored by Paul Miller Custom Pools. Andy Sprinkler Service and 777 Graphics. Inside row number two. Out of Sweet Lake, Louisiana in the 78, it's going to be Wyatt Wilkerson. Also on an MB Customs. Wilkerson Transportation. Action Auto Parts, Cajun Pools and Spas, K Dillard Racing, and Joel's Auto Sales. Starting outside him in the 57, out of Lavernia in a rocket chassis, that's Jason Kelly. Sponsored by Fast Track Towing Inspections, Long's Machine, Henry's Liquor, Roofing and Repairs by John Kelly, and SKRE Graphics and Collectibles. Next up, we got Rhett Starnes in the 7 out of League City, Texas, driving a Rocket XR1 chassis. Sponsored by 77 Inc., J&J &J Motorsports, Starnes Racing, Stratagen Shock and Suspension. Up next in the 9 is going to be Ray Doyon out of Lacoste. Y'all know Ray. Driving an MB Custom. Sponsored by Ewing Landscape and Irrigation Projects. 89 Motorsports and Alamo Truck Accessories. Uh, way back on the last row of the field here, Cody Hardage in the 12 out of Seguin, also driving a Rocket XR1. Sponsored by Billy Bob's Repair and Tire, Carroll Construction, Lone Star Pressure Equipment, Mobag Suspension. Cody Hardage, keep an eye on him from the back. He's got some style competition folks in front of him. And on starting scratch on the field here, another tough, tough competitor out of Salado, Texas, GW Egbert in the 717. Sponsored by High Roller Race Car, Speed Secrets, E&E Collision Center, Big Tex Autoplex, 121 Towing, Mobag Shocks, Day Motorsports, Brooke and Liam. What? All right, sounds like uh, we, got a, we got a lot of oil laid down over there in turn three they're going to work on. Somebody's going to go over there and work on it, I hope. And uh, 
Man, y'all feel the cool weather rolling in right now. The uh, temperature just dropped about 10 degrees, it seems like, right now. So uh, we got a little oil to work. We're going to bring the late models out and roll the top just a touch, try to give them the best track we can possibly give them here tonight. No, oh, he's going to bring a bobcat out and work on the oil. That must be some heavy-duty oil over there, I tell you what. Yeah, there they come. So, All-Star Crate Late Model Series. Uh, this is the kickoff to our winter series. $7,000 in points money for our crate late models. We got to say a big shout out because the whole series presented by Billy Bob's Repair and Tire. Also got to thank Speed Secrets, Mobag Suspension, Texas Industrial Radiator, Race On Texas, and 317 Awards. Race on Texas, they're here tonight. Man, if you uh, are not a subscriber, check them out, raceontexas.com. Uh, the best of the best. You catch racing all over Texan, Texas every weekend. You can't beat it, folks. So uh, check out raceontexas.com. So the track's uh, definitely thrown everybody for a loop tonight. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, it's been a little slicker down. The bottom's gotten better. You saw Jared Moppin flying out there in the truck a while ago. So you could tell some, uh, the tracks changed quite a bit from the first, uh, first heat race to the last. It's been a big difference, but I tell you what, the late models are coming out next. These are uh, pretty much 604 crate late models. As you could tell by the chassis, I told you what they were. Uh, they are full blown late models, just like you would see super late model racing, only they're running a crate motor. So you got a couple of options in the, in the game though. You can run a 602, a 604, and right now, during our winter series, you can run a steel open motor. So uh, steel open motor only. Now what it does is there's a different weight rule for each motor, different tire rule for each motor. So it gets a little complicated, but uh, we got it figured out. And I think you're gonna see some killer racing here in just a minute. As you can see, the Bobcat working over there in uh, turn number three, trying to get a little cleanup work done and see if we can't get this show on the road. Three. Three, we're three heat races, 24 late models here tonight. We're only running 20 in the main, so we're gonna run a B main. We'll, we'll start 20, that's kind of an effort to uh, give you all the quality show that you deserve. So we'll, uh, we'll run a quick B main after intermission. So we're gonna take four out of each of the first three heats. So we'll qualify 12 right off. Everybody else gonna run back to a B main and we'll take the top eight out of the B main. We'll start 20 late models in our field tonight. So uh, look for a couple more tomorrow. Uh, had a few calls. We, we actually expected a few more than we got, but I tell you what, can't be disappointed with 24 late models. Down here in the South, it's hard to find that nowadays. Uh, so excited to kick off this All-Star Crate late model series. We uh, have talked to Cotton Bowl and uh, we have talked to 105 Speedway and a few others. Of course, we will be racing down in Corpus at the race ranch. Uh, Texana over in Edna and then here at I-37 so next season looks very promising in the late model world the crate late model world especially uh, here in South Texas so excited to be able to bring y'all some great late model racing so three heats coming up top four out of each heat if you notice that first heat man that one was stacked I gave y'all who was in that one that one that one's pretty tough so uh, GW Egbert man he's got his work cut out for him coming from the rear of this deal he's uh he's a hell of a driver so if anybody can can get it done i believe he's the guy so we'll see he's gonna be a have a hard time catching dean abby off the front row i tell you tonight we drew for starting position we'll uh we'll line them up as they finish their heat for the feature it's a thousand to win hundred to start this evening tomorrow night we will time trial the cars in and uh start our lineup our heat races off of time which should give us a, a really good show off of the time. And then our heat races follow that up straight into our feature. So looking for another big night. Tomorrow night, 2,000 to win, 200 to start. So a couple of great nights of late model racing. I tell you, the, the sleeper in here I'm not sure about is Wyatt Wilkerson in the 78. Uh, obviously coming a long ways out of Sweet Lake, Louisiana. He traveled here with... Uh, Shane Abair, who also will be in a late model in a later heat. 
So uh, good to see Wyatt make that haul. <laughs> I can tell you, he was down there. The rule says 6,800 is the RPM required on the chip. So you got to run a chip for the crate motor. 6,800 is all you're allowed. And all he had was a 67. <laughs> he was searching. I tell you, you don't want to give up 100, I promise. Here they come. Ryan McDonald in that five outside him. There's that 26 I told you about, Dean Abbey. Abbey's going to be tough. There's Wilkerson, Wyatt Wilkerson, the 78. The 57, uh, very familiar Jason Kelly. The seven of Rhett Starnes, uh, Starnes Racing family, very, very prominent all over uh, the Houston, Southern Texas area. The nine of Ray Doyon, 12 of Cody Hardage, and there comes a 717 of GW Egbert. All right, I was told by the head scorer we were going to roll the top a little bit. See if we run them, up. run them around just a touch right here on the top. Everybody went down, coming back with their coats. Wind started blowing out of the north. I try to do a little communicating with them as well over the race receiver. They can't hear me. I can't hear them. I don't want to hear them, honestly. <laughs> I hear enough of them in the pits afterwards. In fact, we're going to show them one. So we'll uh, get them rolling here. All star crate late models. Three heats. Wait till you get 20 of these guys out here one time in a little bit. It's coming. Outside front row, Dean Abbey, Wilkerson on the inside of row two. Let's keep an eye on those. Keep an eye on that 717 from the rear. Here we go. Abbey quickly out front in the 26. They're going to go caution, going to go caution. All right, Flagman trying to get him to start five by five, by side by side. He's warning the uh, 26, but I think the five needs to step on the gas a little bit. I don't believe that's a 26. It needs a warning. Uh, just because you're putting along on the inside don't mean you got the right to do so. You got to step on the gas too. They're coming out of four. When it's time to go, it's time to go. So uh, let's see if we can't get them to move a little better this time. Green flag's out. Same result. All right, here we go. Abby way out front, down the back three, wide down the back chute. Keep an eye on Ray Doy on here. He's trying to split between Wilkerson and Kelly. The seven of Starnes to the outside. Starnes and Egbert get together, the 717 and the seven. Dean Abbey way out front. Ryan McDonald in that five doing a good job. Here comes Wilkerson on the inside of the 78. Three wide out of turn number two. GW Egbert on the move up to fifth. Got to get in that top four to transfer. Again, here comes Wilkerson on the inside of McDonald down the back straightaway. 78 going to take over second. Ray Doyon right there lurking in fourth. And here comes Egbert in fifth. We're halfway, halfway this time by. See if Ryan McDonald in that five can uh, hang on here. Doyon starting to pressure him for the third spot. Field strung out just a touch. Doyon and McDonald has allowed Egbert to move in. Keep an eye on the 717. Coming up on two to go, two to go this time by. Here comes Doyon, here comes Egbert. We're racing for transfer, folks. 
Cody Hardage now moving into the hunt. Coming up, white flag, Dean Abbey in the 26. Wilkerson comfortably in second. We got a battle for third. Hardage to the bottom of Egbert, not this time. Egbert gonna try to make a run on Doyon here. He needs to get in the top four to transfer, otherwise headed to the B main. Not gonna happen. Your top four are gonna go to Dean Abbey. Wyatt Wilkerson second. Third will go to Ryan McDonald. Fourth, Ray Doyon. Fifth, the 717 of GW Egbert. Woo wee. Oh, and check out that time, 16.0. That's moving, friend. That's a 16 second lap around here. My goodness. Looks like Ray Doyon in the nine. Yes, Picking sir. up the final transfer spot. All right, here comes heat number two. That was a good one. Jeffrey Abbey, also out of Boyd, Texas. This is the brother to the 26. Jeffrey Abbey in the 47 out of Boyd, Texas in an MB Custom sponsored by Platinum. Restoration, BNC Machine, CSG and A&A &A Towing. Outside him, Robbie Minton in the 3D out of Lacoste in a track star chassis sponsored by 3D Landscaping and Site 1. Inside row 2, Andrew Hessler in the 1X out of Elmendorf in a rocket. Sponsored by a whole lot of people. Relief for the troops. Uh, Valley Industrial. Rick's performance, some of these guys' handwriting is tough, guys. Uh, Valley Transportation, Mark O'Donnell Consulting, Amsoil, Performance Bodies. All right, next we got Nate Jantz in the 99 out of Alsdorf, Texas in a rocket, sponsored by Jimmy Alford Machine and Dino, KMJ Properties, Wells Fargo. Next up, Landon Souter in the 08 out of Elmendorf in a rocket. Sponsored by C3 Speed Horses and Reflective Record. The 10-4, Brandon Brzezowski out of Lavernia and a Rocket XR1. Sponsored by Billy Bob's Repair and Tire, Mobag Suspension Technology. Schaefer's Oil, the Trash Can Cleaners, Texas Industrial Radiator. And uh, bringing up the last row here, out of Lafayette, Louisiana, in a Rocket, number nine, Shane Abair. Sponsored by B&D Motorsports, Cajun Pools and Spas. Joel Brown Plumbing, Joel's Auto Sales. And starting scratch on the field, uh, I know Newton Barda in the four. He's a steel motor guy, so he's not in a crate. In a Warrior Chassis out of Lytle, Texas, sponsored by 3D Landscaping. Carissa Barda Photography. CPU Repair, Dotson House Moving, and Gator Dotson. Here we go, lights out, we're going this time. Keep an eye on the 47 here. Jeffrey Abbey quickly out front. One of the toughest competitors in racing today. Right there on his back bumper though, Robbie Mitten. Wazowski on the move on the inside, trying to get up under Hessler here. Coming out of turn number two, the 10-4. Oh, look out for the 99. Bardo with a big move there. Shane Abair all the way up to fifth, looking for fourth. They're working on the transfer already. Keep an eye on the nine out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Brzezowski, what a move, Brzezowski to second. Jeffrey Abbey gonna be hard to catch, we'll see what he's got. Brzezowski second, Shane Hebert third. Newton Barta in the open motor up to fourth here. Keep an eye on second and third, here comes. Oh, Jeffrey Abbey pushes up, Brzezowski in the 10-4, gonna come down the inside. Brzezowski in the 10-4, trying to make the move for the lead here. Here comes Abbey on the bottom three wide out of turn number four. Brzezowski, new leader. Abair all over him. Brzezowski, Abair, Abby, Barda, your top four transfers. Here we go, two to go, two, two laps for Shane Abair to try to get around Brandon Brzezowski. 
Dean, Jeffrey Abbey, excuse me, still hanging on to third. Barta all over him here. White flag, Brandon Brzezowski in the 10-4. Shane Haber, Abbey, and Barta. And I tell you what, the 99 is right on their bumper. Nate Jantz is right there. Barta goes by Abbey. Here comes Jantz to the inside. Abbey for the transfer coming out of four. Abbey's car just too tight. Who's going to get it? Nate Jantz. Jeffrey Abbey going to have to go to a B main. Your winner, though. From the sixth starting spot in the 10 4, how about Brandon Brzezowski? Second, got to go to Lafayette, Louisiana, Shane Abair. Third, to the Lytle, Texas driver in the four of Newton Barda. And fourth, sneaking in there on the last lap, the 99 and 8 Jans. What do you think about that there, Chris? Man, I had my eye on that 99 machine. Halfway through that race, he was having trouble in turns one and two, and he got something figured out. He fell way, way back and then came back on the last lap for that pass. Man, it was so cool to see. Man, to, to figure out a track that quickly and get it righted and back up into the top four, impressive, impressive move from the 99. Absolutely. All right, here we go. Heat race number three, our final heat for tonight. Kevin sitting in the one out of Baytown, Texas. Sponsored by Mirage Construction and Copano Pools. Outside him, Bo Begnaud out of Spring, Texas in a Rocket XR1, number 32. Sponsored by Sandy Weld and Bolted Tank. Inside row number two, out of Lavernia, track favorite in the 29. How about Jamie Campbell in a Rayburn chassis? Sponsored by A-plus Boat Services, Cactus Land. Gee, I don't know what he spelt there. HD Landscape Swenson Racing Shocks. All right, inside row three, Matt Fox in the 53X. Out of Kerrville, Texas, sponsored by J3. Excuse me, that was outside row two. Inside row three, Anthony Boatman in the 75. Out of White House, Texas, in a Rocket XR1. Sponsored by Mobag Suspension and Consulting Day Motorsports. McBride Transmission. Outside him, in the 25, little Robbie Starnes out of Bay, Texas. Baytown, Texas, in the Rocket XR1. Sponsored by... First Class Septic Day Motorsports and 77 Incorporated. All right, our fourth and final row, 19 on the inside, Barry Quaid. In the 19 out of shirts, striving a rocket. Sponsored by Signs and Designs by Ronnie. Houseman Supply, ZNS Tent Rental, Diets Forms, Hooker Harness. And bringing up the rear, Jack Lewis out of Temple, Texas in the 91. Sponsored by All American Air Conditioning. Here we go. Keep an eye on Sitton and Bednog. Sitton, Kevin Sitton quickly out front. That one car has been on fire lately. Sitton, Bednog, Jamie Campbell in the 53 of Fox, your top four. Starn starting to work on trying to get his way into the show here. Pretty much spread out at this point. Not much to talk about as we come to halfway. Kevin Sitton, Kevin Sitton out front. I don't think the one car lifts as he gets down in here at turn one. I don't believe he lifts off the throttle. Got lap traffic here, the 91 coming right here. Keep an eye as he rolls around the bottom, has to stab the brakes, keep off of the lap car. Starnes, one man out in that 25, trying to figure out what to do with Matt Fox in the 53. White flag, one lap left, Kevin Sitton. All right. 
fight. Your winner out of Baytown, Texas, in the one is going to be Kevin Sitton. Second going to go to Bo Benton on the 32. Jamie Campbell pick it up third. And our final transfer will go to Matt Fox in the 53X. Robbie Starnes in that 25 be the first one out looking in here. So we uh, set up our B main from here. We'll, uh, I believe we have a B main for the factory stocks, Chris, and then we'll have intermission and then go to our late model B main. So uh, I'll be back with you all here in just a little bit. Go at it, Chris. What would you think about sitting? I don't know if you could hear it from down there, but he was not lifting off the gas getting into one. I'm telling you, from where I'm sitting, you could hear it. Yeah, he had that machine hooked up. Uh, definitely understand why he picked up a, a victory a couple weeks back down south. Uh, impressive, impressive performance from the one of Kevin Sitton. Uh, couldn't hear uh, exactly who was lifting and who wasn't, but but I, I trust you up there, Mr. Owen. If you said he wasn't lifting, then he wasn't lifting. Looks like we got our factory stock B-Main coming on out. This is where it starts to get western right here, folks. All of these factory stock drivers wanting to get in the mix into the feature race later tonight. So we may see some bent, bumper, some bent fenders, pin bumpers, hurt feelings. It's the end of the season. I don't know if any of these guys are looking to make friends out here tonight. Factory Stock, sponsored by All In Designs. Be feature number one, we're gonna go 12 laps. 12 laps and we're gonna take the top 10. Top 10 in this race, gonna punch their ticket into the feature race later tonight. I'll have your lineup in just a moment. Looks like we got 20 cars scheduled for this B main number one. I'll try to count and see if we got 20 on the track, but here we go. Starting on the pole, the 777X GW Hess song. Outside of him, the 38 of Josh Sewell. Row number two, the 15L Daniel Lopez, and the 82 of Donald Kane. Row number three, the 139 of Mark Villarreal Jr. alongside the 99 of Jeff Hammett. Row number four, the young lady, the 39, Michaela Trimble, and the 41 of Franco Krulik. Row number five, 02, Shannon Maurer, alongside the 37 of Evan Lambert. Row number six, the 88 of Stephen Whitaker the third, alongside the 25R, Nathan Rahi. Row number seven, the 780 of James Stanfield, alongside the B4, Billy Rosetsky. Row number eight, the 20R of Ricky Long, Alongside the 40 of Dakota Hurley. Row number nine, the triple seven of Will Spears alongside the 75 of Jerry Miller. And in row number 10, the 55C of Chris Clark and the 44K of Michael Keelick. Got some flags for the young ones tonight. Buster Dean, oh, we got some candy too, my favorite. Thank you, sir. Flags and candy from the the Cars duo, Lightning McGreen and Buster Dean. You got some kiddos in the audience. Come get some candy. Come get you a flag. Cheer your favorite racer on. We're about to go green flag racing on this heat race. Or sorry, the B main for the factory stocks. I'm a little punch drunk here tonight with all of this racing action. I forgot we're ready for the B mains. Flagman going to show them one this time by. The triple seven X of GW Hessong and the 38 of Josh Sewell will get unleashed first. Lights are out around the track. We're gonna set these factory stocks loose right here, right now. GW Hessong, Josh Sewell gonna lead him around turn three, looking for the green flag. And there we go, Heat, sorry, B feature number one. We got 20 factory stocks on the track and we're not even feature racing yet. The 15 of Daniel Lopez inserts himself up into the top three, pushes Josh Sewell up into the top lane.
Josh Sewell in the 38, all over the back bumper of the triple seven or Hessong. Looks like the 82 of Donald Kane still maintaining his fourth position. But here comes the 41 of Franco Krulik. Franco Krulik now working his way up into the top five. Throws a slide job underneath the 15 of Daniel Lopez. Franco Krulik now finds himself up in third position after that awesome move in turn number four to get by the 15 of Lopez and the 82 of Kane. Oh, we got a yellow. Yellow coming out. The 139 of Villarreal got a little bit of fender damage up there on the right front. Got a fender sticking out on the right front of the 139. Looks like we got a little bit of a tire rub on the B4. Billy Rosetsky looks like he's got a little bit of tire smoke coming out from underneath that thing. We'll keep an eye on that. Definitely do not want to cut a right rear tire. Oh, actually, that's not a tire rub. That looks like it's coming from underneath the car. That might be a transmission letting loose. Or it could be something coming out of the valve covers. Something trying to escape. All I know is that when you let the smoke out of these things, it's real hard to put it back in. You don't want to let the smoke out too much. The 38 of Josh Sewell going to battle against the, the triple seven. Little bit of bumper rubbing there on those two. They are the top two. And then here comes the 41 of Franco Krulik. Man, throwing a slide job early in this race to get past the 139 and the 15. Once again, we're taking the top 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Right now, the 40 of Dakota Hurley on the bubble. Shannon Maurer right in front of him. And right behind him, the 88 of Whitaker, the third. So keep an eye on that. Those three cars right there battling to make it into the feature race. Everybody else behind them not going to be able to make it in tonight. They'll have to try again tomorrow night. But 12 laps, and we've completed about three or four. So still a pretty good ways to go in this fe uh, the B feature. We'll get them stacked up two by two and ready to go once again. Triple seven of Hessong being scored as the leader. Hills lead him around turn number three and to the green flag. That'll put the 41 of Franco Krulik side by side with the 38 of Josh Sewell. Here we go again. Franco Krulik now challenging for the lead. We go three wide for second. The 38 of Josh Sewell thinks better of it. Gets on the binders and backs out, and we got another yellow. Another yellow for the 88 of Whitaker the third, stuck up in turn number one and two. Not sure what happened there. Maybe a little ignition trouble. Maybe the car popped out of gear, not sure, but 88 gonna have to get sent to the back loses all that position. He's going to have a long way to go in just a few short laps. That young man going to have to chase down a whole bunch of cars to make it into the feature. I think about eight cars in front of him. I'm not sure if we will score that as a complete lap. We may have that restart just the way it was. And it looks like that's what's going to happen. So going back to the previous lineup, 
Triple Seven of Hessong will be your leader. O'Krulik and Sewell, row two. Lopez and Villarreal, row number three. Rahi and Trimble, row number four. So now on the bubble, the 20R of Ricky Long. He is one position behind, I believe, the 40 of Dakota Hurley right now is in the 10th position. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's right, the 40 of Hurley right now on the bubble. So keep an eye on that blue number 40 as we take back to the green flag. Well, we got a couple cars getting real friendly up in turn number four. We will have a, another restart with the same lineup, except that those two cars probably going to have to go to the back as soon as we can figure out how to get them untangled. Looks like the 37 of Evan Lambert and maybe the 02 of Shannon Maurer. Trying to do the tango up in turn four. So Lambert and Maurer, I believe, will get them untangled. But uh, they're going to have a long way to go after this little dust up up there in turn four. That's not the O2 of Maurer. I see the O2 of Maurer driving around the track, so that may be the 20R of Ricky Long. And yeah, the 20 of Ricky Long gets loose and uh, tests out the traction in turn number four. Officials still checking over the 37 of Lambert. Unsure of whether he'll be able to continue in this race or if we're going to have to put him on the hook. And it looks like he might be able to get around under his own power. Lambert going to check out the... Uh, the toe on that one, he might be a little toed off right now. The front right wheel still appears to be on and inflated, so good news for the 37, at least for the moment. We'll keep an eye on the back of the pack to see if they have any, uh, any more displeasure to express to each other between the 20 and the 37. So once again, count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The 40 of Dakota Hurley still on the button. And it looks like the 780 of James Stanfield. Stansfield, my apologies. Oh, it looks like the 37 of Lambert going off into the pits, not going to be able to continue in this one. But well, once again, the 40 of Dakota Hurley right now trying to fend off the rest of the pack. One, two, three, four, five. He's got five cars to keep behind him to make it into the feature race later tonight. 
starting with the 780 of James Stanfield, who's going to pull up right beside him on the top side. Lights are out around the track. We're going to go green this time by. Once again, this 777X of Hessong going to lead him around to the green. Franco Krulik going to work his way around the bottom. Did not throw the slide job that time, but it looked like he was just in front. Oh, we got another yellow. Another yellow for the 20R of Ricky Long up in turn number two. Man. Franco Krulik in the 41, pulling out all the moves and then just getting smashed back down by the yellow flag. I know that uh, Franco Krulik is a talented driver, uh, but he may be exhausting his move set here and showing off all of his <laughs> moves to these guys that he's trying to get around. But we'll see. We'll see what he can do with it. Franco Krulik getting a good run on these restarts. Keep an eye on that 41 machine. Man, can you guys believe it? All of this action and we're just now in a B main. We haven't even started the features yet. Still got another thing. Once again, we get our lineup figured out here. Now the 40 of Dakota Hurley has four cars to fend off. As you can see, the uh, right rear fender of the 40 machine took some damage there. Punched in a little bit. Luckily, no tire rub, at least for the moment. Looks like the 20 of Ricky Long back under his own power, but going to have to tag the back of the field. He's got one, two, three, four, five positions to make up before he can get into the feature race. So pretty good challenge for the 20. We'll see if he's up for it. We're going to go single file. We've seen enough cautions with this B main. We're going to go single file, see if that'll get him settled down. Not good news for the 41 of Franco Krulik, who now has a several car lengths distance to make up to try to get in front of those two cars. But keep an eye on the 41. We'll see if he's got any moves left. But once again, right now, on the button, the 40 of Dakota Hurley scored in the 10th position. We're going to go green. Here comes the 15 of Daniel Lopez, side by side with the 41 of uh, Franco Krulik. Lopez working his way around the bottom. Here comes Frank now, side by side with his song. Josh Shule working his way up to the lead of this race on the bottom. We'll see if he can get his way up and into the front of that 777 machine. Working his way around the bottom now. 
Josh Sewell into 38. Oh, look out, the 15, and Lopez goes around in turn two. Daniel Lopez sits at the bottom of turn two, and there comes the yellow flag yet again. Lopez back under his own power. I believe now we will score the 38 of Josh Sewell as the leader of this race. So Josh Sewell in the 38 and the triple seven of Hessong trade places. The 39 of Michaela Trimble, the young lady doing a really good job, right now finds herself in the fourth position in front of the 99 of Jeff Hammett. And it looks like we got a tire down on the 25 of Nathan Rahi. You hear that tire smacking the fender down there. Nathan Rahi not gonna be able to continue in this one. Gonna have to take it off into the pits. Tough break for the 25 of Rahi, who was up into the top 10 So now the 780 of James Stansfield finds himself on the button with four cars behind him. The 780 in 10th position, moving his way up into the feature race. The 139 of Mark Villarreal Jr. looks like a little bit more damage to the right front of that machine. We'll see if that bumper holds on, but uh, that bumper looks like it's tucked up right underneath the tire of the 139. He might have to go to the pits, and he does. And while he does that, we're going to go green. So now the 15 of Daniel Lopez finds himself up into the top 10. Franco Krulik, meanwhile, goes to battle against the 777 up in the front of the pack. Franco Krulik battling on the bottom for second position. He's side by side with the triple seven of GW Hessong. The 39 of Michaela Trimble about to come under fire from the 99 of Hammett. The 88 of Whitaker Jr. now goes around the top side and gets around the 40 of Hurley, but I smell something, a little bit of smoke coming out from that 88 machine. That could be a tire rub, but most likely that is a, an axle seal going out with three wide right in front of him, three wide as we come to the white flag, Hammett, Mauer and the 39 of Trimble. Checkered flag coming out for the triple seven of Hessong. No, sorry, the 38 of Josh Sewell, the 41 of Okrulik, then the triple seven of Hessong. Mauer, Trimble, Hammett, the 88 of Whitaker the third. That does not smell like tire to me, but the 88 will have a little bit of time before the feature race to get that car back together. The 40 of Hurley, the 15 of Lopez. And it looks like the B4 also maybe got a little bit of smoke coming out from underneath it. We thought that was a tire rub earlier. That is not a tire rub, but Still able to get around under his own power for the moment. But I do not believe he made it into the top 10. We'll keep an eye on the provisionals. We'll keep an eye on the broken cars and stuff like that. But we may see the B4 of Rzechki into the feature. All right, we're going to move to intermission for just a few minutes. We'll try to get the track prepped a little bit more for our feature races. We've got some koozies that we're about to throw out. So, Hessler. We're blocking Chris. Now. Yeah, you're blocking me and I can't see. No, we got some koozies coming out from the Hessler camp. The 1X uh, 
late model, so if you want some koozies, come check out the young lady down here with some koozies. Raise your hand, give a cheer. They're tossing out some koozies. We're going to throw on some tunes, you guys. Check the restrooms, grab a cold drink, grab a quick snack, and we'll be back for the features in just a few minutes. It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time all over the country. And yes, great show coming up. Congratulations all the race winners. Welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years. No problems. Go to www.sawblade.com. Performance sawing. It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time all over the country. And yes, great show coming up. Congratulations all the race winners. Welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you?
thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years. Markups, no problems. Go to www.sawblade.com. Performance sawing. It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time, all over the country. And yes, great show coming up. Congratulations, all the race winners. Uh, welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years.
Go to www.sawblade.com. Performance sawing. It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time all over the country. And Yes, great show coming up. Congratulations all the race winners. Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years.
Test of a man's good name is acceptance of failure and losing a game with a smile and a handshake. Quiet, ever building rage. I got knocked around in a real small town and they poked and they prodded and marched me around for a laugh in the snow. Try to tear a good man's soul. For a fool's gold, a beggar's bargain It's too much time, space to get lost in a swamp or the road Two if you can let it go Blood's thick, the water's deeper The wine works fine, but the whiskey's cheaper Now turn it around, quick before your sun goes down It's like you never saw the sucker before Been alive on the side of your bedroom door With an ear on the phone Begging just to let it go For a fool's gold, a beggar's bargain It's too much time, space to get lost In a swamp or the road Two if you can let it go But it's thick, the water's deeper, the wine works fine, but the whiskey's cheaper, and I turn it around quick before your sun goes down. Lost in a swamp of the road 
with sport mods and so forth. It's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time all over the country. And Yes, great show coming up. Congratulations all the race winners. Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years. Sounds like we're just about ready to uh, get started with our B feature for the late model. So make your way back into your seats. You're not going to want to miss this one. We'll get these guys sent out onto the track in just a bit. Once again, I want to thank a lot of our sponsors tonight that made this race possible. Race on Texas. I know a lot of our fans are watching from Race on Texas tonight. The Grass Guard and Delfino Flores. Alamo Truck Accessories, Colby Ott, All In Designs, Russell and Anthony Gordon. Jeff Wills with Alamo Hot Rod Parts. Dennis Smith with Nagalitos Gear. Alan Alexander, Hercules Foundation Repair. Fons Pontian, Bob Cata Pleasanton, uh, LJM Ross, Price Chevrolet. James Sullivan, Golden West Oil, Franco Krulik, Raymond Lund, Iron Horse RV, AT1 Construction, Tony Bernal, Scott Vall with Preferred Motors, Gary Swenson, Swenson Racing Components, Gator Dotson for Dotson House Moving, and Brandon Brzezowski with Billy Bob's Repair and Tire, and once again, Jamie Luna with State Farm. So thanks to all of our wonderful sponsors putting together a good show tonight. I'm going to kick it back up to my buddy Owen up topside for the call on the late model B feature. Here we go, we got uh, 12 laps, 12 cars, taking the top eight to the main event tonight. On the pole, out of Salado, Texas in the 717s is gonna be G.W. Egbert, the fourth. Outside him, out of Comanche, Texas in the 47 is gonna be Jeffrey Abbey. Row number two on the inside, out of Baytown, Texas, Robbie Starnes. And outside him in the 12, out of Seguin, that's gonna be Cody Hardage. Row three, the 1X, Andrew Hessler, the third on the inside, outside him in the 75 out of White House, Texas, Anthony Boatman. Row number four on the inside, the seven, Rhett Starnes out of Mount Bellevue, Texas. And the 08 on the outside landed Souter in the 08. And row number five on the inside, the 19 out of Shirts, Texas, Barry Quaid outside in the 57. Out of Lavernia, that's going to be Jason Kelly. Bring it up the rear here, the 3D of Robbie Minton out of Lacoste. And the 9-1 out of Temple, Texas, Jack Lewis in the 91. 
All right, you saw that 3D do be pretty fast earlier. Uh, not sure what happened to, happened to Robbie Minton there, but he's going to have to start in the back of this deal, so uh, we'll see what he's got here. Sending four to the house. Sending four to the house. We're going to put narrow it down to a 20-car field, so you want to get in the top eight. You do not want to be in the back four where you find Robbie Minton, as I mentioned, along with Barry Quaid, Jason Kelly, Jack Lewis in that 91. Here we go. G.W. Egbert from the pole. Egbert and Abby. Egbert to the lead in the 717. Abby to second. Here comes Robbie Starnes. Cody Hardage right there in fourth. Egbert going to leave and Starnes on the inside. Abby on the outside. Cody Hardage going to lose a little ground. We got a great race for the lead here. Egbert. Abby Starnes, your top three. They're all over the front straightaway there. Here comes Abby on the outside. Starnes on the inside, right through the middle is going to be the Salado, Texas driver, GW Egbert. Egbert through the middle, man. I tell you what, we got three different lines right now on this racetrack. Abby on the outside, watch that 47 working the very top. Abby back to second. Going halfway this time by, halfway. Here comes Jeffrey Abbey on the outside. They got lap traffic in front of him. Abbey to the lead here, the 47. He's going to drop it down through the middle to avoid the 91 of Jack Lewis. Oh, the 717, yellow's out, yellow's out. See what the scores say. It looked like the 47 was our leader there. Hey, Owen, oh, just a heads up, the 47 just ran a 15.65 lap time around this place. That's blind. That is absolutely destroying this racing surface. Averaging over 66 miles an hour for the quarter mile. They're probably hitting about 100 miles an hour at the end of the straight. Awesome. Trying to single file them out here. If we can get them single file, then we'll get the lineup right and double them back up when we're ready to go racing. <laughs> Oh, and I didn't catch what brought out the caution, but I did notice the one and another car somewhere on the backstretch did a little 360 and kept it going. Yeah, I'm assuming that's what it was. I don't honestly know why the yellow came out either. Yeah, the 1X, do, uh, Hessler doing a few uh, donuts on the backstretch, way it sounds like. All right, Flagman showing them one, lights out. Lights out, let's go, let's go. GW Egbert in the 717 still out front. Keep an eye on that 47 though. The 47 I thought made the pass, but he may not have completed the lap before the yellow came out. We go back to last completed lap, puts GW Egbert back out front. Here we go. Jeffrey Abbey, Robbie Starnes, your top three. Jason Kelly in the 57 turns off into the infield. Gonna go caution. Yeah. 
Looked like the 57 of Kelly got punted on that restart down into the infield. We'll check out the right side of that machine, see how much uh, contact caused that. Yeah, not much damage on the right side. B-Main racing, never fun. B-Main equals tore up race cars most of the time. All right, lights out, let's try it again. Minton with a problem, the right front won't even turn as he pulls it to the infield. Robbie Minton out of the race here. At this point, only 11 cars left on the track. Here we go. Abby quickly back to the top side. Egbert through the middle, kind of hanging right there on the bottom. Starnes behind him. Cody Hardage right there in fourth. Here comes the seven. The 47 on the high side. Here we go. Yellow's out again. Kelly again in the 57, facing the wrong direction, this time up in turn number two. We'll keep an eye on that car. We'll see if he maybe takes it off into the pits. Not sure if there's any problems there, but uh, getting turned around twice and zero laps, that's not a good look. No, not a good look at all. All right, here we go. Lights out, let's try it again. Egbert, Abby, and Starnes. Yeah, 57's off. Here we go. Good run for GW Egbert in the 717 that time. He got him a good lead. Here comes Abby back on the top side in the 47. See if we can get some laps in here. The 1X with some heavy smoke out of Hessler. Abby on the top, Starnes on the bottom, Egbert on the bottom. Abby not giving up on the top here. GW Egbert still out front. Abby trying to chase him down on the outside. It's a big run out of four every time. He struggles right here out of two. The car doesn't rotate, maybe even over rotates actually through the middle of the one and two, and then it just won't drive off. Two to go, here we go. Two to go on the 717 of Egbert. Kessler in that 1X, lots of smoke. White flag, 717, GW Egbert. Addy goes to the bottom now. the 717 GW Egbert second gonna go to Jeffrey Abbey third to Robbie Starnes fourth to Cody Hardage select the 3D will be out the 08 the 91 and maybe the 1X uh, actually actually the 57 is already gone so the 1X will be in so uh, Taking our top eight there, Chris. We'll be uh, back with a good feature here in a little bit. 20 late models. Uh, get your dust goggles on, buddy. Yeah, man.
the 1X, letting some big smoke out of that machine. Hopefully they can put it back in for the feature and keep it in for the 20 lap feature later tonight. Guys, I gotta tell you, that was some fun right there. That was what you like to see on a Friday night. Cool 74 degrees out here and late models screaming around this racing surface. I gotta tell you, Jeffrey Abbey in the 47 just ran a 15.5. The lap times continue to go down. That is some crazy stuff. We're about ready to get started with our features. We're going to send our first feature out, and I will have the lineup for you in just a moment. Looks like first out will be the Limited Modifieds. So Limited Modifieds, the first to run their feature tonight. And then after that, we'll have the Factory Stocks. Sport compacts, trucks, and then we'll finish up tonight with the late models. The big feature, the 20 lap feature with those screaming late models. Man, I don't know if I want to be anywhere else right now than uh, right here watching some awesome racing action. Well, we have a quick moment. I'm going to do our 50 50 drawing. We got a couple different drawings tonight. First drawing will be for the 50 50 official, which will be $41. So get out your 50 50 tickets. They're white and blue tonight. White and blue 50-50 tickets. And I'm going to try to draw one to the best of my ability here. Ticket number 071411. 071411. Come down and see me right between the stands. I've got some money for you. Limited Modifieds taken to the track for their feature race. I got 20 laps scheduled on the books. 20 laps for this feature race. Once again, the number on the 50 50 071 411. 071 411. There you go. Take home some money. And you can hold on to that. There you go. All right. Lineup looks like this. We'll do the other 50-50 drawing after this feature race. The 99 of Alan Alexander starting on the pole outside of him, the 11T Tom Grothews. Row number two, the 879 of Marcus Mekelcheck and the 26 of JJ Jennings. Row number three, the 1T Nathan Titsman and the BD1 Gilbert Perez. Row number four, the 14C Lawrence Mekelcheck. That's the orange 14C. We got the BD2 of Daniel Preston also in row four. Row five, the 13M of Benjamin Mekelcheck. That's the green and white 13M. Outside of him will be the 79 of Joe Armandia. Row six, the 73 of Derek Gonzalez. Welcome back, Derek Gonzalez. Outside of him will be the 14 of Trent Beaver. Row seven, the H14 of Heath Stewart. Outside of him will be the 95 of Sterling Tausch. Row eight, the 18 of Ch Chase Haber. And the double OK, Oliver Billingsley. Looks like we might have a few cars not able to make the call. I see the 73 of Derek Gonzalez has moved to the back of the pack. Can't tell for sure. I think we might be missing the 18. No, we had the 18. All right, regardless, lights are out. We're going to go green flag feature racing right here, right now. All eyes on the 99 of Allen Alexander. Leading him around, turn number three. Going to pick up the throttle in turn four, and here we go. Benjamin Mekelcheck in turn two. 
Mekelchek and the 73, Derek Gonzalez. I don't think they initially got together, but they landed together. Looks like Gonzalez got it turned back around. We'll check on the 13 of Mikulczyk. Benjamin Mikulczyk. Looks like he might be sitting on an infield tractor tire. He might need a little help getting off the tractor tire. So no laps complete in this feature. All right, let's check out what we've got here. The 99 of Alexander, the 11 of Growth used, the 879 of Marcus Mekelchek, outside of him, the 26 of Jennings, the 1T of Titsman, the BD1 of Gilbert Perez. I see the BD2, Daniel Preston, the 79, Joe Armandia, H14, he's Stewart. The regular number 14, Trent Beaver. The 18, Chase Hebert. Sterling Tausch, there goes the 13 of Benjamin Mekelchek back under his own power. Looks like he's gonna get his spot back after that little dust up in turn number two. We will have a full restart, it looks like. Lights are out around the track. We're gonna try it again. One more time for the Limited Modified, sponsored by Swenson Race Products. Swenson's up in Bernie. Check them out, they'll take care of you for your racing needs. And here we go again. of Alexander out to the early lead, but here comes the 879 of Mikulczyk around the top. Looking for a pass on the first lap, not gonna happen. Oh, got two around right in front of us, one in the drink. The double zero of Billingsley got turned around right on the front stretch. It looks like we're gonna stay green. Double OK, Billingsley trucking around. Looks like he might stay off of the surface. Looks like he's gonna check himself out of this one. Bit. Sorry, Marcus Mekelchek goes around the 99 on the outside looking for the lead. He's gonna have it this time around. Double O Billingsley still taking the short way around the track. Still battling for the lead is the 99 of Alexander along with the 879 of Marcus Mikulczyk. And here comes the 1T of Nathan Titsman. Titsman and Alexander Alexander ran him all the way down to the bottom. Finally, Titsman got off the gas and fell back. Here comes the 14 of Trent Beaver right behind the one team, Nathan Titsman. Beaver and Titsman going to battle right now. That's a battle for third. And a yellow. Yellow coming out. I can't tell for sure, but it looks like we might have something up in turn number two, and it looks like that's a race car. The BD1, Gilbert Perez, checking out the, uh, the outfield there in turn number two. Looks like Gilbert Perez 
back under his own power and looking to retake his position. That or he's going to go express his displeasure at uh, something that happened. Sterling Tausch in the 95, speeding up to catch up with the back of the pack. Looks like we've got some confusion on where everybody's supposed to be, especially towards the middle of the pack. These guys not giving up an inch. We'll get this lineup sorted out here real quick. Track officials giving them the look over. So Marcus Mekulczyk, the 99 of Alan Alexander, the 1T of Titsman, the 14 of Beaver, and here comes the H14, that's Heath Stewart. He started this thing in 13th, now he finds himself up into the top five. Flagman showing him one, we're going to get him side by side, doubled back up for a restart. Here we go, side by side, two by two, just like Noah intended it. The 879 of Marcus Mechelchek gonna lead him around as the lights go out. Looking for the green flag this time around. Here he comes in the blue and white and orange. 879, Marcus Mechelchek leads him around. Trent Beaver in the 14, wasting no time on that lap. Little slide job and picks up a couple spots. He finds himself now in second place. Nathan Titsman and the 1T got jostled around a whole bunch. Now he finds himself on the outside of the top five looking in. up into the wall and turn number one that's the bd1 gilbert perez turned around looking the wrong direction in turn number one there was some contact coming into a whole bunch now he finds himself on the outside of the top five looking in up into the wall in turn number one that's the bd1 um, i don't see any flat tires at the moment looks like he might be okay i did not have eyes on what caused that so we'll keep an eye on the bd1 and see where he lands in the lineup we'll see if he gets his spot back or if he's going to have to tag the back of the pack Looks like the front of that machine is a little tore up right there. You can see the, the body work now up under the front bumper. Track officials checking over our front stretch wall. The only wall here at I-37. We're not going to have any Ross Chastain type of maneuvers here at I-37 Speedway. Looks like the 879 of Marcus Mechelchek relaying some information to our track officials, maybe some debris on the track. Wanting to make sure our track officials get that checked out. He will regain his spot as the leader of this race. But hey, check out the 14 of Trent Beaver. He started this thing in 12th position. Now he finds himself up into second, right alongside the 13M of Benjamin Mechelchek cousin to Marcus, who is our leader. We've talked to Benjamin a couple times here at I-37. We talked to Marcus several times here at I-37. These guys know how to get it done here, so keep an eye on those cars. And we talked to Trent Beaver about a month and a half ago, maybe a little bit longer. Trent Beaver knows how to get it done too. We go lights out. We're gonna get this thing restarted right here. Right now with Marcus Mechelchek on the loud pedal, here we go. Oh, a little 
little bit of dust up in turn number two. Looks like the 18 of Chase A. Bear gets pushed off into the infield. Here comes the H14 of Heath Stewart. Now finds himself up into the third position and battling against one of the other number 14s, the Tim Beaver. Trent Beaver having a little trouble in turn number two. Takes the shortcut through the infield, but loses the position to the H14 of Heath Stewart. Here he comes. Couple cars taking it off into the pits. The 99 of Alexander going off into the pits. Not gonna finish this one tonight. 879 of Marcus Mekelcheck, still your leader. Laps are winding down. I don't know if there's gonna be enough time for the H14 of Heath Stewart to track down your leader. Looks like he might need a yellow flag. Heath Stewart also coming under fire from the other number 14, Trent Beaver, now back up to his back bumper. Benjamin Mekelcheck in the 13M, now coming under fire from the 18 machine, the Chase A. Bear. No, oh, I apologize, that's a VD2. VD2 of Daniel Preston. Daniel Preston working on the back bumper of the 13M. Lost a little position that time. Gonna have a lot of ground to make up. Two laps to go for your leader. Now make it three. Benjamin Mekelcheck, sorry, Marcus Mekelcheck in the 879, now gonna start to come up on lap traffic. White flag in the air for the 879. Marcus Mekelcheck coming around for the final lap. The 14 of Beaver gave it a shot against the H14, but not gonna work this time. He's gonna have to settle for third. The 14 of Heath Stewart picks up second position. Trent Beaver third. Marcus Mekelcheck, sorry, Benjamin Mekelcheck fourth. And the BD2 of Daniel Preston rounds out your top five. Marcus Mekelcheck coming down to the checkered flag. We're gonna to talk to him in just a moment. Marcus Mekelcheck in the 879 with a commanding performance right here in our first feature race. He got around a few cars and then just never looked back. We're gonna shove the microphone in his face and see what he can spit out. Oh, man, that was just our first feature race. He's got a little bit of safety equipment to peel off there. Give him just a second, but he's gonna hear you. There he is, folks, he can hear you now. Give him a round of applause. Marcus Mekelcheck. Showing us how to get it done. Marcus, how you feeling, buddy? Well, my mouth's a little dry. <laughs> I tell you what, it's the same thing up here. There's a little dust uh, being kicked around, but man, what an awesome performance there. You got around a few cars, and then you just never looked back. Man, I got to just start off with I-37 did an awesome job at salvaging this track tonight, man. It, it was racy, top to bottom that whole time, I felt like. Um, I'm super excited to be here for tomorrow also, so hopefully they'll have another great racetrack. 
Yeah, man. We, we appreciate the, the praise there. We did salvage this track. How, how was it out there? Did, did you find a couple lanes, or was it one lane gummed up? What'd you think? Man, um, the cushion felt really good, but it was still way out there. I think the bottom's starting to fade enough. It's probably going to stay racy all night, so that'll be exciting to see. Uh, I want to start with also thanking uh, uh, James, James Cole, Joe Armadilla, Vinco Plumbing, um, On Demand Shirts, Southbound and Down, Ace Transmissions, RPM Equipment. Man, those people do a lot for me. This car's been stellar every time it's hit, hit the track. I just can't thank all those guys enough. Man, you've got a, a whole crew of uh, friends and family here, and uh, especially even on the track, I think there's about five cars that we could attribute to sort of like your your stable. Was there a plan in them playing defense for you, did th or did this just kind of work out? No, man, we're all out here to win. I mean, it's, it's one big family at this whole racetrack. So what I want everyone to do in the stands tonight is go home, get your friends and your family, and bring them out here tomorrow so we can put on another show for y'all. There you go. Thank you very much, Marcus Mechelcheck. Wise words, and man, like you said, we're going to put it on again for you guys tomorrow night. So grab some friends and family. It's the final show out here at I-37 in Pleasanton, Texas tomorrow night. Final show of the season. So uh, we're going to have all these late models, expecting probably 15, 20 more cars out here. And uh, man, we're just going to put on a show for you guys. We kind of know what Mother Nature is going to do with the track, so we can maybe put together even a little bit better of a track tomorrow night. But man, I got to tell you guys, that was a pretty good race for our uh, first feature there. First feature race out for the Limited Modifieds, and we're going to send another one down the chute in just a moment. While we do that, I've got another 50-50 drawing for you. So, hope you held on to your 50-50 tickets. This time, it's a $100 American Express gift card. $100, that'll buy you a few gallons of gas. Can't say that you can uh, come to the racetrack and leave with maybe more money than you started with, but here we go. Factory stocks coming down for the feature race. I'll have the lineup for you in just a moment. Ticket number 071366. 071366. Come and get your $100 gift card. Hey, there you go. Let's see that. All right, well, there you go. Congrats once again. Once again, it pays to come check us out here at I-37 Speedway. We always have our 50-50 drawing and a chance to maybe leave with more money than it came with. But here come the factory stock sponsored by All In Designs. Feature race for the factory stocks. We're going to take them 20 laps. Starting on the pole, the 30 of Memphis Villarreal. That's the yellow and orange. Sorry. Yellow and black, number 30. Outside of him, the 29K, Dylan Kowalik. Row number two, the 741 of Cameron Starry and the 91 of Jared Maupin. Row three, the 53K, Casey Kraus and the 66 of Johnny Torres. Row four, 3D, Johnny Walker Brown and the 34H of Ryan Doyon. Row number five, the 94 of Alan Torres and the 28M of Mason Castaneda. Row six, the 92R of Robert Keelick and the BD3 of Ray Allen Kulhanek. Row 7, the 38 of Josh Sewell, the 41 of Franco Krulik. These are your B main entries here. Row number 8, the 777X of GW Hessong. And the 02 of Shannon Maurer. Row number 9, the 39 of Michaela Trimble, the young lady, alongside the 99 of Jeff Hammett. Row number 10, the 88 of Stephen Whitaker, the third, alongside the 40 of Dakota Hurley. And row number 11, the 20R of Ricky Long and the 15L of Daniel Lopez. Looks like I see all of those cars out there. 22 cars scheduled for this race. We're going to take them 20 laps. It's about to get wild and western out here at I-37. Factory stock, full fendered racing action. 
on big fluffy 10 inch asphalt slicks. These guys throw it off into the turns and kind of just hope that it's going to stick with these tires. Lights are out around the track. All eyes on the 30 of Memphis Villa Reality leads us around to this feature race. And here we go, Green. Oh, and we got one around already, two around, and a whole bunch of uh, cars just facing the wrong direction. No laps complete. I tell you what I think happened is uh, I think these races Oh, and we got one around already, two around, and a whole bunch of uh, cars just... That's probably not what happened, but we like to hope that maybe it was some external factor and not driver error that caused all of that dust up there. Well, we got the 3D, Johnny Walker Brown up in the top of turn number two, still stuck up there. And we got a pretty good light show. Hey, sometimes when you don't have fireworks, just a, a nice little light show of lightning and thunderheads off in the east. It looks like that's uh, pretty close, but I can tell you it's about 20, 25 miles away. And it's working its way up to the northeast, so we should not see any rain or any, uh, any sort of adverse condition because of all the thunderheads up there. Just pretty to look at and maybe a little distracting for the drivers. We gotta tell these guys on the radio to keep their eyes on the track and not in the sky. As we try to get our lineup sorted out once again, we'll get everybody back in the position they were in as best as we can. Looks like our top eight cars do appear to be in about, well, about the top six are in the same order there. So here we go again. All right, a uh, little bit of bumping and grinding there in turn number one, but we're all facing the right direction this time. Oh, and this time the 53K of Kraus goes around in turn number three after some contact. Kraus was trying to work the bottom. We're all facing the right direction this time. Oh, and this time the 53K of Kraus goes around in turn number three after some contact. Ada infield tractor tire there. We're gonna have to get him off of that thing. That was definitely not a solo spin there. There was definitely some contact, but nothing intentional that I could see. Looks like it just had nowhere to go. But sometimes it's hard to see what's going on on the track from where I'm sitting, so I could be wrong. Don't take anything that I say for 100% certainty. And uh, on that note, while I have a moment, I do want to give an apology to the 19 late model of Barry Quaid. He got uh, involved in a dust up in turn number two about a month ago at our last race. And I announced over the intercom that it didn't look like there was any contact that caused it. I went back and looked at the the replay on Race on Texas, and I was just dead wrong. It's all there is to it. So my apologies to the 19 of Barry Quaid, late model driver. Good to see him back out here in that late model, competing with the uh, Crate Late Model Series that's here. He got that thing back together after a big hit. 
and uh, put that late model back together and is back out racing with us. So here we go, lights out again. The 30 of Villarreal. I don't think we've got any laps scored in this race, maybe one. And lots of cautions, but here we go once more. Mm, it's crunchy. Three and four wide all the way through the back of the pack. 94 of Alan Torres, three wide with Sewell and the 91 of Moffin. They go three wide yet again in turn number one and two. O'Krulik, along with the, let's see who is that, the O2 of Shannon Maurer, still three wide with the BD3 of Ray Allen Kohanek. The meat in the middle of that sandwich. Villarreal in the 30, working along the bottom and putting a little distance on the rest of this crowd. The 741 of Cameron Starry, second position. And then about six or seven car lengths back is the 66 of Johnny Torres, now breaking away, is uh, the top three or four, the 29 of Dylan Kowalik. Rounding out your top four and we got another yellow. Another yellow on the track. I did not see what that one was for. I do see the 40 of Dakota Hurley with his tires facing the wrong direction in the front of that car. He's gonna jump down into the hot pits and see if there's anything that they can fix. Looks like a broken toe link. Not going to be able to fix that in the hot pits. His night will be done. Tough break for the 40 of Dakota Hurley. He's always fast around here. He had to work his way up through a B main and just got caught in the, the madness that is the back of the pack of a factory stock race. So your leader, the 30. Memphis Villarreal, followed by the 741 of Cameron Starry, who appears to indicate that he's going to want the bottom as he is in second position. Looks like the 66 of Johnny Torres will be scored in the third position. We'll probably see him move up to the top. The 29K of Dylan Kowalik in fourth right now, going to be up in row number three alongside the 53K of Casey Kraus. Those two guys, no stranger to racing side by side with each other. Row number four looks like it's gonna be the 91 of Jared Maupin and the 94 of Alan Torres. Alan Torres making his way back to I-37 Speedway. Good to see the 94 machine back on the track here. We're gonna get these guys sorted out. I think we've only completed just a few laps, so maybe three or four laps out of 20. I might be stretching the truth just a little bit. We'll see what our live timing has to say about this. Lap number four of 20, okay, I wasn't lying. I knew exactly how many laps we completed and it's four, the number is four. Memphis Villarreal gonna lead him around yet again, this time by himself, coming out of turn number three and here we go again. Cameron Starry in the 741 leaning on the back rear fender of the 30 machine trying to let him know he's right there. Meanwhile, the 66 of Johnny Torres taking the long way around on the top. Oh, the 741 of Cameron Starry sends the 30 of Memphis Villarreal around and we got a yellow. Oh, 
The 741 of Cameron Starry sends the 30 of Memphis Villarreal. Or if that was the 741 moving up and just spinning the 30. I suppose we'll never know unless we get the replay on Race on Texas. We don't have the technology to go to a live replay right now. So we'll see what the scorers say about it. Might have been a racing deal. We might see both of these guys get their spots back. Although that is rare, I will say. So it comes to the call. I got to be thankful that I am not one of the uh, the race officials making the call right now because I, I got to tell you, I didn't see it. I could not tell from where I was sitting if it was the 741 moving up or the 30 moving down. Based on what I'm seeing on the track right now, it looks like the 741 going to be called with the caution on that one. The 30 of Villarreal going to get his spot back. And the young man from down south, Cameron Starry, they're going to have a long way to go with the rest of this race. We've completed four laps, so he's got 16 laps to make his way back up to the front. If anybody can do it, I tell you what, Cameron Starry is a talented driver and he can do it. But right now, he is charged with bringing out that caution. So he'll be at the back of the pack for this restart. And it looks like we're going to go single file. We're going to try to get these factory stock drivers calmed down just a little bit. Single file restart now for the 30 of Memphis Villarreal. The 66 of Johnny Torres is really the biggest benefactor for this single file restart. He's going to get to start by himself in the second position right in front of the 29K of Kowalik and the 53 of Kraus. Here we go. And they stay the same way. We've got the 91 of Jared Maupin trying to work on the bottom against the 53 of Kraus. That is a battle for fourth position right now. Mopping on the bottom and then the 94 of Alan Torres leaning on the back bumper of the 91 of Mopping. Alan Torres now up into the mix for the top five. Alan Torres pushes the 53 of Kraus out of the top five. He's all over the back bumper of the 91 of Maupin, who's working on the bottom against the 29 of Kowalik. Looks like Maupin going to gain that spot. Maupin up to third, but he leaves the bottom door open for the 94 of Alan Torres. Now the 94 going to run the slide job and move himself up into third. They trade positions. Maupin takes the spot back for the 94 of Torres. This time the 91 of Maupin holds on to the spot a little bit better, but the 94 of Torres is all over his back bumper. Oh, look out, the 91 of Maupin leaves the door open. Meanwhile, the battle for the lead is starting to brew. Here we go with the 30 of Villarreal and the 66 of Torres. With lap traffic in the way, the 92 of Keelik right in front of your leaders. We'll see if the 30 of Villarreal uses a pick and roll to get the 30, or sorry, the 66 of Torres off of his back bumper. Looks like that's what he's gonna do. Torres having to fight against the lap traffic and we got a dust up in turn four. Looks like the 38 of Sewell and the 53 of Kraus turned around. My eyes were not on that side of the track. I did not see what happened. So we'll see how the scores play this one out in the lineup.
Well, I tell you what, that's not what the 30 of Memphis Villarreal wanted to see. The 66 of Torres got picked off with lap traffic, but now he's going to be right back up to his back bumper again on a restart. And then we've got the 91 of Maupin and the 94 of Torres. These guys fast, fast movers working their way up to the front. Alan Torres and the 91 of Maupin push the 29 of Dylan Kowalik back down to the fifth position. The 777X of GW Hessong, he made it up through the B main, now finds himself in the top six, is on the outside looking into the top five. Looks like the BD3, Ray Allen Kilhonic also moving his way forward. The 28M, Mason Castaneda right there in the mix. The 38 of Josh Sewell looking to get his spot back. He's trying to put himself right behind the 34H. And we'll see where the scorers put him. We will have another single file restart. We're halfway, we got 10 laps down and 10 more to go. So only halfway in this feature. I'll tell you what, it's a little crunchy down here. Lots of dust being kicked up. Looks like the track is slicking off, especially in the middle. as we continue to get our lineup sorted out. What's up, Trey? The 29 of Kowalik scored in the fifth position. 777 Hessong in sixth. Kohanic, Castaneda, and the 34H. Looks like the 53 of Kraus is going to be sent to the back, at least for the moment. The 38 of Sewell, side by side with the 34H for the moment, trying to get his spot back. The 99 of Jeff Hammett, right behind the 38 of Sewell for the moment, but it looks like, well, yeah, look, I think we're good. Okay. Track officials giving the thumbs up. Looks like we're going to go single file for this next restart. Villarreal, Torres, Maupin, Torres, Kowalik, your top five, leading them us around to the green one more time, and here we go. Looks like we stay in about the same order for this next lap. The triple seven of Hessong now working his way around the outside. Nobody knew he was there and he picks up two spots coming around on the outside. We like to see GW on the top. Oh, it looks like he got a little mixed up. Just as I started to give him compliments, he got a little crossed up and loses a couple positions. Now outside of the top five looking in yet again. Meanwhile, the 30 of Villarreal is still your leader. 
coming under fire from the 66 of Johnny Torres, and we got another yellow. Couple around in turn number three. Looks like the 28M of Mesa Castaneda facing the wrong direction. Up in turn number three. I believe the 92 of Keelick went around as well, but that was after all of the mayhem. Well, I'll tell you what. Two more laps from when we last talked about it. We're 12 laps down and about eight more to go. All right, I, I just heard from uh, Rachel Plant that uh, Race on Texas is showing replays tonight. So for those of you watching from Race on Texas, you got to see a few of the replays of what happened. So feel confident that you've got a better idea of what's going on out there than I do. So uh, my apologies if I make any mistakes on what I say up here. But uh, once again, Race on Texas, an excellent place for you to watch. And uh, if you happen to have a Race on Texas subscription, but you're also here, you get the best of both worlds. You get to see the replays and you get to see the racing live. So hey, check out both, even if you got to Race on Texas. Here we go, 30 of Villarreal once more. Villarreal leads us around once again, coming under fire from the 66 of Torres. The 91 of Maupin leaning in on his back bumper. Alan Torres in fourth. Dylan Kowalik in fifth. Here comes the BD3, Ray Allen Kohanek on the top. Now battling against the 29. That is a battle for fifth position. Ray Allen Kohanek making the move around the top side of the track. We're showing two laps to go now. Two more laps to go for the 30 of Villarreal. Coming down to the white flag, the 30 of Villarreal, the 66 of Torres, the 91 of Maupin, and the 94 of Alan Torres. Meanwhile, the BD3 of Kohanic now moves up into the top five, pushes the 29K out of the top five. Here comes the checkered flag. Johnny Torres gonna try it on the top. Not gonna be enough. 30 of Villarreal takes the victory. Memphis Villarreal in the 30, putting the combination together tonight and holding on after all of those restarts. We'll talk to him in just a minute about all those restarts to see what he thought about it. But a strong performance right here tonight from the 30 of Villarreal, getting the thumbs up from the 741. They had that little dust up early in the race. I'm sure Cameron Starry given the wave just to apologize for the spin that happened. Cameron Starry, the young gentleman. But we'll get Memphis Villarreal out of that car in just a moment. He's gonna wanna hear from you after that performance. And there he is, folks. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Memphis Villarreal finally putting a combination together. Memphis, I got to tell you what, bud, you've been out here a few times this season, and you've had strong runs, and just for whatever reason, 
things getting in your way, but you finally put it together tonight. How does it feel to put the combination together and to hold on through all those yellow flags? Yeah, uh, we've had a good car every time we've been here tonight. I think it was the worst car we've had. I was just way too free there, uh, under adjusted there. But man, it was just, I knew there were some pretty fast guys behind me. So I just knew how to keep my composure, you know, and just keep doing what I was doing. I hadn't gotten past all race. So I knew as long as I hit my marks, I was gonna be pretty good. There you go with the track. A little bit tricky out there tonight. Looked a little bit slick uh, for you guys. and. Uh, a little bit of a dust up between you and the 741. I saw he gave you a wave as he came around and you got your spot back. Cameron Starry giving you the thumbs up there. Uh, but man, putting it together tonight, who do you have to thank for making that hot rod fast? Yeah, uh, Sames Ford, Matt Motorsports, uh, Swinson Racing Shocks, also uh, Ray Allen Kahanek. He's been helping me out lately with some, with some shocks and I just can't thank him enough. Uh, uh, everybody that makes this deal possible, all of my girlfriend, JD, they, they work hard on this thing, so we all work hard on this thing. So it's just uh, good to get one. And Powers Racing Fabrication, it's a, it's a damn good car. So There you go. Well, hey, what a time to peak right now at the end of the season. You put it together tonight. We'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow night. But, man, awesome job. Congratulations. Give a big round of applause. Yep. Thank you. Memphis Villarreal getting the victory lane pictures right there. From all his help, he mentioned Ray Allen Kohanek. He did a really good job working his way up from the bottom of the field there. He uh, worked his way up to the top five. Made a pass on the last lap to get up into the top five. But man, 18 of 20 laps, we finally had to just say, hey, enough is enough. Let's call this one. And we're going to bring out our next feature. Looks like we're going to have the Sport Compacts coming out, and then right after that will be the trucks, and then we'll finish up with the late models. So don't go anywhere. Stay strapped into your seat. If you got to go get a drink or run to the restroom, grab a, a snack from our concession stand, now would be a good time. We're going to send the Sport Compacts down the chute. I will have your lineup in just a moment. Here they come. Give them away, folks. About the only time they can see you up in the stands. Let your favorite drivers know you're here to cheer for them. Sound like the uh, 83 of Sonny Kinnaman there testing out the rev limiter, making sure that rev limiter is working. Sounds good to me. So your lineup looks like this, starting on the pole, the 3M of Mark Earl outside of him, the red 67L, that's Sean Leisure. Row number two, the 55, Fireball Riker Hernandez. And alongside him will be the 32, Josh Garcia. Row number three, the 03G, Gabriella King. We call her Gabby. Gabby King, outside of her, will be the 28 of Levi Hernandez. Row number four, the 76Y of Donald Lewis. And the 88 of Justin Sitterly. Row number five, Hadley Johnson in the eight. And the 21T is Sean Tracy. Row number six, the four of Zach Dotson. And the 33 of Jamie Garner. Row number seven, the 70, Rod Tate. The 83 is Sonny Kinnaman. And bringing up the rear, she told me earlier her hand is still not fully healed, so still racing with a broken hand, the 3% of Sam Walker. 
Lights are out around the track. We're going to set them loose here right now. A 3M of Mark Earl sitting on the pole for this one. He's going to look for the green flag coming out of turn number four. And here we go. Sean Leisure in the 67L getting the edge on the top side over the 3M of Mark Earl. We'll see how it plays out coming to the flag stand. And it's going to give it to the 67. a little contact between the 28 and the 03 of Gabby King. Getting a little testy out there between the 28 and the 03. Finally, the 03 falls back a little bit. The 28 of Hernandez moves forward. She'll set her sights on the back bumper. Meanwhile, your leader, the 67L, Sean Leisure, having to work his way around lap traffic already. Oh, we got one around in turn number four, the 76Y of Donald Lewis taking the shortcut through the infield. Lots of distance right now between first, second, and third. Almost a half a track. Oh, we got our dust up in turn number four. The 32 of Josh Garcia and the 83 of Kinnaman. That looked like some Dukes of Hazard stuff right there. The 83 of Kinnaman almost going airborne through the karting track. Looks like the 88 of Sitterly got spun around up in turn number three. It looks like he's back under his own power. And we've got the 32 of Josh Garcia. Josh Garcia sitting in the infield, right on top of an infield tractor tire. I heard that that's how you make uh, infield tractor tire babies right there. So the 32 of Josh Garcia right on top of a tractor tire. We pull the tractor tire out and uh, maybe we'll have some little tractor tires for next season. Yeah, infield tractor tires all over the place. They've been known to move anywhere from six to 10 feet at any given time. Infield tractor tires. Right in front of these race car drivers. These race car drivers will tell you a story about how far they saw an infield tractor tire move. It's like those old fishing stories. If you caught something that was six inches long, tell them it was 12 inches long and uh, it's the rule of two, I guess. I don't know. So, the lead of the 67L of Leisure now completely erased. And we'll put him right in front of the 3M of Mark Earl, who was in second position. The 55 of Riker Hernandez scored in the third position. Looks like he's going to be on the top. Levi Hernandez in the 28 in fourth. And uh, moving up from the back, the 70 of Rod Tate. Mr. Turtle himself started this one way back in 13th. Now he's up in the top five. Keep an eye on that 70 machine. We know he's fast. We know he can do it. He's done it before. So 
we'll see if Mr. Rod Tate can put it together again tonight. Looks like our lineup is still not quite set correctly. We're going to get these guys sorted out here. Race officials coming out to point some fingers. Oh, it looks like the call is for the eight machine to pull off. Might have a flat tire. Looks like at least the right rear might be a little bit low. Hard to tell from here, though. Hadley Johnson in the eight. Right rear looks flat to me. I've, uh, I've never driven a sport compact, so I can't really tell you how vital the right rear is to the handling of the car, but I imagine uh, imagine it has some, some effect on the handling there. So The eight of Hadley Johnson gonna go off into the pits. This night will be done. Lights are out around the track. Now we're good to go with our lineup. The 67L, Sean Leisure gonna lead them back around. Here we go one more time. the 32 Josh Garcia limping along into the infield looks like uh, his night will be done and we got another yellow yeah, they were all yellow Looks like we got one stuck up in turn number four. I believe that's the 03 of Gabby King. Race officials checking out that race car. And back under her own power, but it looks like that's a, that's a right front flat tire. It's a tough break for the 03L, or 03G, sorry, Gabby King. That will end her night. I have to say, she had a pretty strong showing here at I-37 for what I understand might be her first night out here. Thanks for coming to race with us, Gabby. We hope to see you again tomorrow night. So we'll get them lined back up one more time. Looks like we're gonna go single file. 67L, Sean Leisure. I'm gonna lead him around. 3M of Mark Earl in second. And Hernandez and Hernandez, the dynamic duo of brothers, in third and fourth.
laps are winding down. The 67L building on his current lead, about six or seven car lengths between him and the 3M of Mark Earl. Fifty-five of Riker Hernandez, about two turns back, holding firmly in the third spot. We're ten laps down, ten more to go. Lap traffic now for your leader, the 67L Sean Leisure, navigating his way through the lap traffic of the four and the three percent. Here comes the 88 of Justin Sitterly, making the pass on the 28 of Hernandez. Finds himself up in the top one, two, three, four, five. So Sitterly moves up to the top five. Levi Hernandez on the outside looking in. Sixty-seven of L. Sixty-seven L. Sean Leisure has just about lapped the entire field. He's coming up on the eighty-three and the twenty-one. With two more laps to go. Really, no one anywhere near the sixty-seven at the moment. The closest competitor is about. A straight away away. White flag now for the 67L. And here he comes to the checkered flag, the 67L, Sean Leisure. Returning to race winning form here tonight at I-37 Speedway. Well, it looks like uh Little push there for the 67L. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. Well, let's pull that man out of that machine and give him a talking to. I'll be interested to hear from him and. Uh, how he has returned to race winning form here at I-37 Speedway. Been a while since we talked to Mr. Sean. And uh, got to get his hair tied back there. 
I know how that feels. There he is, Sean Leisure, with a commanding victory. Sean, it's been a while, bud. Uh, how's it going? Uh, it's, yeah, it's been a minute. Uh, <laughs> glad to be back. Hey, there you go. Oh, man, I tell you what, you really had no competition tonight. You just put it on him, uh, kind of like falling off a bike. You did not forget how to get around this place. Tell us, how was your night? Well, uh, honestly, it started off pretty low. I, I drew pretty bad, in my opinion, at least. I've drawn bad pretty much all year. But uh, other than that, uh, we got up to the front in the heat race, relatively quick. Uh, started outside pole, with the inside, inside pole being one of my best friends. So I'm, I hope he got second. I have no idea. I assume he did. So I hope he got one, too. Love him to death. So <laughs> I don't know. I, I'd say I had a pretty good night. Yeah, I'd say so, too, man. How far away is Mansfield, Texas for you? Uh, if you count in the rain and traffic, it's six hours to get here today. Oh, man. Well, uh, we thank you so much for making the drive and putting on a show for us tonight. Mm -hmm. It was awesome to watch you get around this place. Who do you got to thank for making that hot rod fast? Well, first off, i got to thank my parents for even allowing me to come out here and do this every week and letting us drive six hours out here and racing tonight for the final race of the season, at least for me. I don't know about everyone else. I hope everyone else still racing. That would be nice. Uh, i got to thank Diamond Pools, uh, Carlos Cesaro. He came out here and sponsored me this year. Uh, TBG Tuned, L&D Transportation, A15 Suspension. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting someone, but thank you everyone who supports me week in, week out, and uh, we'll be back next year. There you go. Sean Leisure out of Mansfield, Texas, putting it on us tonight with a commanding victory. Last race of the season. Woo! Oh, well, we still got two more for you guys. Got to get a picture here. Got to get that victory lane. There we go. All right, well, up next. Texas Dirt Truck Series. Their final points race for the season here tonight. Let's see if I can find some uh, points results here. to find the points easily, but I believe the 91 of Jared Maupin and the 19 of Jared Barber might be competing for the top points position. Feature race lineup looks like this. A 22 of Adam Tracy. Starting on the pole, right alongside a 693 of Colton Borlas. Row number two, the four of Trailer Caulfield and the 41 of Riker Hernandez pulling double duty tonight. Row number three, the 95 of Lightning McGreen and the 28 of Russ Parker. Row four, the 416 of Aaron Letty and the 91 of Jared Maupin. Row five, the 21T of Sean Tracy and the double zero of Buster Dean. Row number six, the 319 of Larry Baggett and the 19 of Jarrett Barber. Row number seven, 01 T of Adolph Tracy and the five of Daniel Gadette. And bringing up row number eight, the seven of Lance Chacon, which I believe that's not Lance Chacon. Although I don't see the seven out there anyway, so maybe we don't have to worry about it. Anyway, bringing up the back, uh, I've got scheduled the 52 of Donald Mick, but I 
I don't think the 52 is out there either, so not going to be able to make the call. But here we go, 20 laps for the Texas Dirt Truck Series. Keep an eye on the 19 of Jarrett Barber and the 91 of Jared Maupin. Looks like the 41 of Riker Hernandez trying the open wheel option on that Ford up there. Row number two. Lights are still on around the track. It looks like we're going to have one more parade lap. There we go. Flagman going to show him one this time by. 22. Adam Tracy alongside the 693 of Colton Borlas. Lights are out around the track. Tracy and Borlas, your front row, going to be looking for the green flag this time by. We're going to set these Texas dirt trucks loose, and here we go. The 95 of Lightning McGreen off to the early lead. Jumps out in front of the 22, coming to the first lap. It's the 95 of Lightning McGreen. Three wide coming down the front stretch. Looks like the 41 of Hernandez was one of the pieces of bread in that sandwich. Oh, and we got one around in turn number two. Everybody on the brakes and we got a yellow flag coming out. Looks like the 19 of Barber may have. Oh, and we got one around in turn number two. Everybody on the brakes, and we got a yellow flag coming out. Pulling off into the infield hot pits. We'll see if they can get that truck figured out. That would definitely put a damper on the points battle if there still is one between the 19 and the 91. Man, I'm just I'm just so nervous for the uh, the 41 of Riker Hernandez. It's like uh, going out there without a fender and without a hood. That's like it's like going wrestling without a jock strap, man. You, all the important bits are just right out there in the wind. It just makes me makes me nervous. So we'll have our first restart. The 95 Lightning McGreen takes to the lead with the 416 of Aaron Letty now up to the top three. And the 693 of Colton Borlis will join him in row number two. Here we go, green flag again. Woo, we almost got a little crazy right here on the front stretch. The two trucks driven by the Tracys got together. Luckily, they were able to keep it going in the right direction. Meanwhile, the 95 of Lightning McGreen coming under fire from the 91 of Jared Maupin. Oh, look.
look out. The 95 and the 416 get together coming down the back stretch. Little bit of contact there, but they stay headed in the right direction. And I believe we've got some debris on the track that's going to bring out another yellow. Man, these Texas dirt trucks are not. Six get together coming down the back stretch. Little bit of come. So we're going to check out our lineup one more time here. Looks like the 91, Jared Maupin, will be switching places with the 95, Lightning McGreen. So the 416 of Aaron Letty Looks like he will be scored in either the second or third position and the 91 of Maupin. Eh, I'm not sure we're going to start the race like that. Looks like maybe the 95 and the 91. A little bit of chit chat through the, uh, the windows there. I'm sure they were just telling each other, you're my best friend. But here we go, lights out. The 91 of Maupin gonna look to make another move on the 95 of McGreen. McGreen leads him around to the green flag once more, and here we go. Oh, the 693 of Boilis goes around in turn two. Gets it facing the right direction. Looks like we're gonna stay green. Meanwhile, the 95, still your leader for the moment. The 95 of McGreen working his way around the bottom side of the track. The 91 of Maupin on the top. McGreen gonna pinch him off a little bit. They're side by side, heading down the back stretch. This time the 91 of Maupin gonna make the move to get right in front of the 95. And it looks like he overpowered the turn. They're still side by side, 95 and 91. 95 on the bottom, 91 on the top. They come around yet again to the flag stand. Give it to the 95 of McGreen. A little bit of a close call there for the 41 of Riker Hernandez. He holds on to it coming out of turn four. Almost collects the front stretch wall. Black flag yet again being shown to the 22. Oh, that was almost too close to call. The 95 of Lightning McGreen, maybe by a bumper at most against the 91 of Maupin. You gotta wonder how much longer they can keep this up. The 95 of McGreen trying to establish position. Oh, lap traffic went around right in front of them. We're going to throw the yellow. Now this is going to get interesting right here, folks. I believe 
Take this for what it's worth, but I believe the 95 of Lightning McGreen was ahead on that lap. So he will be given the huge advantage of starting this race out front of the 91 of Maupin. Still trying to get the 22 off the track. Not sure if he just doesn't have a transponder, can't see the black flag or what. There he goes now, off into the pits. I don't have a radio, so I can't tell you exactly what the black flag was for, but I'm sure there was a reason for it. So here we go, we're down to uh, eight trucks. Eight trucks left in this feature race. Lightning McGreen still in the lead, but now it's gonna have a huge advantage on this restart to jump out in front of the 91 truck. They were side by side for about four or five laps there. Looks like maybe a little bit of head games being played there between the 91 and the 95. So once again, the 416 of Aaron Letty jumping right back up into the second row. Row number three is going to be the 319 of Larry Baggett and the five of Daniel Gadet. We will have yet another restart. Moppin on the outside trying to get the jump on the 95. And yet again, we are side by side coming out of turn two. This time the 91 of Moppin. We're gonna throw a yellow here. I. Uh, I am not a betting man, but uh, I gotta, yeah, what what did you say? He jumped. He, he jumped the flag. I didn't say it. Somebody else said it, but uh, I believe that's what happened. It looked like the 91 just too far forward in position. We're going to set them up again, re-rack them and stack them up. Give the 91 a little bit of a finger wag. And at this point, we might even be going single file. It does look to be the case. We're going to restart single file now. That's, uh, that's really not a big deal for the 91, but for the 416 of Aaron Letty, now he's got to start three car lengths back in third position. <laughs> 91 of Moppin gets a good run coming down the front stretch, but then loses a bunch of momentum in turn number two. So once again, side by side with the 95 of Lightning McGreen. McGreen on the bottom. 91 of Moppin on the top. It looks like 91 maybe just has an ever so slightly stronger run at the moment, but the 95 doing all he can to just hang in there. But it looks like that's all it's gonna be. That's the 91 of Moppin. Now putting distance on the 95. A little bit of a backfire there from maybe the 95. Couldn't tell for sure. Looks like everybody's still on race pace. Aaron Letty in the 416 coming under fire from the 319 of Larry Baggett. They're side by side in a battle for third.
really the only battle on the track right now is between Aaron Levy and Larry Baggett coming out of turn four. Oh, look out! Aaron Letty all up on the front stretch wall. I believe he may have cut a tire, I'm not sure. Looks like he's still on race pace, but he may have gotten pinched off from the 319. Now Aaron Letty working along the bottom side against the 319 of Baggett. Obviously unhappy with what just happened here on the front stretch. Laps continue to wind down. The 91 of Maupin now firmly in control of this race. A whole straightaway lead on the 95 of Lightning McGreen. Still a battle for third place. Baggett and Letty once again side by side as they come to the white flag. And checkered flag in the hands of the flag man now. Oh, we got one around in turn two. Checkered flag still gonna come out. For the 91 of Jared Maupin, Lightning McGreen in the 95 will take second. The 416 of Aaron Letty takes third. The 319 Larry Baggett fourth. And the 28 of Russ Parker rounding out your top five. Looks like the double O Buster Dean will be your top six there. So we're gonna bring Jared Maupin around and talk to him in just a second. We'll see what he thought about all those restarts. With Jared Maupin pulling double duty tonight in the 91 factory stock and the 91 Texas dirt truck. There he is, folks. He can hear you now. Give him a round of applause. Jared Maupin. What's up, Jared? We haven't talked in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while, man. So, hey, uh, did your run in the factory stock give you a real good idea of what this track is doing? Yeah, for sure. Uh, we walked it right before, and I was 50-50 on how slick it was going to go, and I didn't go far enough, so uh, we went extra far on this one, and the uh, truck was good. There you go. Well, hey, uh, man, yellow after yellow after yellow, and you and the 95 were just battling, battling side by side. You finally got the better of him. What made it work for you finally to get around that 95 machine? Uh, I knew that bottom was better, uh, but there's plenty of track to run up over here and over there. There's a lot of moisture left. Uh, it was really racy. I just knew if I could clear him down the back straightaway, I could pinch him off and, and take the lane away from him. There you go, and that's just what you did. You got around him, you got that back bumper in front of his, and, and you made it work for you. And then, man, no competition after that. You were straight away ahead of everybody else. Why is this car so fast, and who do you got to thank? Uh, I got to thank Jamie Fuller for uh, keeping this hot rod going. Uh, me and him got good communication. Uh, we, we talk well on what changes it needs, and uh, it, it shows. There you go, Jamie Fuller keeping this man in a fast race car. Give him another round of applause, Jared Moppin putting a show on for us tonight in the factory stock in the Texas dirt truck taking the gold home good to talk to Jared again man I gotta tell you what I am ready for some late models mr. Owen I was telling you earlier I loves me some late models and it's it's such a, a good thing to see what you're doing with these late models to put this series together and the, man you got some strong competitors from all over Texas and beyond right here tonight Talk to us about it. Yeah, I tell you what, we're excited to have them. I, you know, we put this deal together to run this winter series. Uh, Brandon and uh, Cody, myself, we did a lot of work to try to make this thing happen. And I tell you what, it, the car showed up. Uh, Shane Abair, the Abbeys, there's some quality competition at this facility tonight. So super excited to have the track uh, welcome us in and, and put on a good show for us. We got two nights. I tell you what, tomorrow night will be great too. 
Uh, this track's going to be interesting here. I'm going to climb up there and talk to my drivers and uh, talk to y'all. But I tell you what, what what do you what do you see? Who's your pick there, Chris? Talk to us. Who's Man, your pick, buddy? I don't know. <sighs> I, I got to go with uh, experience on this track, number one. And uh, my buddy Brandon Brzezowski, who you mentioned just a second ago, knows how to get around this place and knows how to do it fast. So I'm, I'm going to look to to see the 10-4 or Brandon Brzezowski try to jump up to the front. But, man, some of these some of these guys from out of town are fast. So we'll see how he can do. Yeah, you're going to catch uh, the 26 of Dean Abbey up there on the front row with Brandon Brzezowski. So... Woo -wee, we got some uh, stout competition right here in this thing. All right, sounds like we got a little thing going on in the pits at the moment. So uh, apologies for yet another delay, but we're going to throw on some tunes. We need to tend to this thing down in the pits for a moment. So kick back, enjoy a cool night or rather morning at this point. Uh, and we'll try to get these late models on as soon as we can. I'll throw we on some tunes for thing you. In the pits. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go over this late model lineup here. Uh, just look and see who I'm gonna be looking for in this feature race. And I was telling you guys earlier, 15.5 on a quarter mile track. I did some uh, some real rudimentary math in my head that uh, averages out to about 65, 66 miles an hour on average getting around this place and uh i would venture to say they're probably near 100 miles an hour at the end of the straightaways that's just cool to see all right where are we at here let's see line up cue us up some good music to kick this deal off to there buddy yeah man you got any requests i got some rock something got bad some, some something outlaw. bad to the bone something good all right let's see here well, like I mentioned, the 10-4 Brandon Brzezowski is going to start on the outside pole against the 26. So a uh, good position for my buddy Brandon. We'll see if he can show up in the race tonight. But, uh, man, i got to tell you, the 47 of Jeffrey Abbey and the 26 of Dean Abbey, just, man, those guys are just fast. And, uh, well, the 26 will start us off on the pole. 47 going to have some work to do. He's starting us off 14th, so he'll be back in row 7. But uh, I would say those are going to be my uh, guys to watch. But you can't count out the one of Kevin Sitton. He uh, picked up a win. He, he won the race in Waco. And he run, won the race in Waco, won the race at Texana as well. I yeah, say. don't count out the 717 either. The race he won in Waco. GW Egbert. You can't count out GW anywhere he goes anytime. So... Uh, there's another one starting well back in the field inside of uh, Jeffrey Abbey. So the 717 and the 47 are two that are starting well back. They're going to give you all a hell of a show tonight, I tell you that. i gotta, I got to say the 717 came out and raced with us maybe a month, a month and a half ago with our uh, local late models and picked up a win. So it was good to talk to GW when he picked up that win. So I know he knows how to get around this place, but we'll see what he can do with this uh, – Pretty tough field, man. I, I'm looking at all of these names, and I just, man, I don't know. It's really going to depend on who's going to find the stick on the track and, and just make it work. Yeah, who's, uh, who's Rebel's pick down there? Who's the Rebel Race Riders pick? Oh, man, who you got? What do you think? I got to go with the Abbeys. He's going with the Abbeys, the 26 and the 47. 10-4, Brandon Brzezowski. Man, we got picks coming in from all over the place. I knew that was coming. <laughs> All right, sounds like we need to uh, call in an ambulance, so uh, we're going to have one run in real quick. So like I said, just uh, apologies again for the delay, but we really do need to take care of this emergency down to the pit. So once again, I'll toss on some tunes for you. If you got any requests, let me know. But otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw on some rock and roll here. Let's see what we got. Somebody mentioned uh, something bad to the bone, so maybe this. really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time all over the country. And Yes, great show coming up. Congratulations, all the race winners.
Uh, welcome to Day Motorsports. How can I help you? Thank you for keeping Day Motorsports in business for over 50 years. It's going to be Brandon Brzezowski, the 10-4 inside. Row number two out of Baytown, Texas. In the one is going to be Kevin Sitton. And outside him, out of Louisiana in the 78, is going to be Wyatt Wilkerson. Inside row number three out of Lafayette, Louisiana in the 9X. That's going to be Shane Abair. And outside him in the 32, our very own Texas driver, Bo Bignog. Row number four on the inside, the five is Ryan McDonald. And outside him in the four is going to be Newton Barda. Row number five on the inside, the 29. Right here, one of your local favorites, Jamie Campbell. And outside, one of your track guys there in the nine is going to be Ray Doyon. Row number six on the inside, the 99. Nate Jantz, I tell you what, if you watched the 99 earlier, that guy was on a rail in the heat race. And outside in the 53X is Matt Fox out of Kerrville. Out of Salado, Texas, starting inside. Row number seven, the 717 is going to be GW Egbert. And outside him in the 47 out of Comanche, Texas, will be Jeffrey Abbey. Chris, maybe we need to go down there and do a out of car introductions or something. We got that kind of time. Row 8, the 25 of Robbie Starnes and the 12 of Cody Hartage. Row 9, the 7 of Rhett Starnes and the 75 of Anthony Boatman. Row 10 is going to be the 19 of Barry Quaid and the 1X of Andrew Hessler. Don't worry, folks. I got just as excited as y'all did when I saw him roll out. I thought, hey, we, we're going to go here? But it doesn't sound like we're quite there. Maybe we're just making room for the EMS situation in the pits. Yeah, I think that's the case. We're gonna get them all down here on the front stretch so you guys can get a good look at these late models holding still for just a minute. Man, I, they just look fast sitting here. They're not even moving. Well, man. GW Egbert pulling in right there in that 717. That 717 and the 47 next to them, those are going to be some tough rides right there. Man, they got a long way to go, lots of cars ahead of them. I'm hoping to see two wide, three wide. Man, these late models, they, they've got a, a pretty wide track to choose from. We'll hope that the bottom sticks. Looks like the top is working its way in. And we'll see what happens with the middle. Take a chance, roll the dice. You might be able to make it stick. Yes, sir. I tell you what, can't thank the sponsors enough for the all-star crate late model series here. Billy Bob's Repair and Tire Race on Texas. Man, they do a lot for all the racing, so can't say enough about Race on Texas and their quality folks. So, uh, Speed Secrets, that's at 717 down there. Speed Secrets, they, they got some secrets there, buddy. They, uh, <laughs> they're pretty damn good. I, I mean, it's no secret that they're fast, so I, I don't know what kind of secrets that they're keeping other than that they're dang fast, and they proved it. But, uh, yeah, we know those guys know how to get around a racetrack. Absolutely. I tell you what, so whatever those speed secrets are, they, they got them figured out, and they're keeping them to themselves, maybe. <laughs> uh, I would if I was them because uh, you don't want nobody to outrun you, right? So speed secret. Mo Bag Shocks, I don't know. You heard me earlier call out everybody's uh, sponsorship and all that, and Mo Bags is on about half these cars. So uh, Morgan Bagley, uh, Suspension Shocks, them guys do a great job out of uh, northeast Texas over there. So Mo Bags. And then uh, Texas Industrial Radiator right out of San Antonio, uh, man, if you need some radiator work, they're, they're the guys that do it no matter how big, how small. They're, they're awesome. 
And uh, of course, 317 awards providing uh, the awards for the for all the DTK as well as uh, the late model series. So 317 awards. What you got going on there? What's Edna telling us? Well, we're going to hand the microphone down to one of our race officials. And maybe you can talk to these guys and maybe get some insights on what they're thinking while they're uh, strapped into their cars. So I'm going to pass the microphone down. We'll see what the drivers have to say. You, own a, you want mine or you want yours? I'll hand mine down. That, that way you can talk to these guys. Go, Edna. Go, Edna. Go. <laughs> Edna, work in the mic. Talk to him here, Owen. Can you hear Owen on the mic? All right. Well, let's see. Starting off with the 26, Mr. Abby. He had a pretty good run in the heat race, and he's going to start us off on the pole. We'll see if he's got any thoughts. What is his plan for this race? Mr. Dean Abby, you're on the pole. What are we going to see from the 26 tonight? Well, hopefully uh, we'll be able to stay here, uh, stay out front and... Uh, Collect a little bit of money by the end of this deal and uh, see what we can do. Uh, track's changed quite a bit. Uh, it's pretty heavy earlier. Uh, slicked off pretty good now. So uh, we'll see if we made the right changes and uh, have something for it at the end. Yeah, like we said, it's all about making the right changes. We'll see how you do. You're going to start us off tonight looking at the green flag. Good luck to you tonight, sir. Mr. Dean Abbey, thanks for racing with us. No problem, thanks. Yes, sir. Bring it around to the 10-4 of Brandon Brzezowski, our hometown hero for the moment. Brandon, you're starting on the front row. What's the plan for tonight for the 10-4 machine? Oh, I don't. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. I don't. I don't have much of a plan here. Just gonna try to keep it up front and clean air and uh, see what we can do here. Uh, hopefully, a good Lord bless with the ability to do that and. Thank all you fans for coming out. Uh, you guys stick around. You're about to see a good show. Absolutely, I completely agree, Brandon. This is about to uh, this is about to be something really awesome and special here at I-37. Starting us off tonight on Friday night. Got a few uh, fans left here. You guys are troopers. Thanks for sticking it in with us. Let's see the 78 Wyatt Wilkerson, Mr. Wyatt, starting in row number two. Number one, thanks for joining us from Louisiana. We appreciate you making the trip. What Thank do you, you got for us tonight? What do you think of this track? Uh, the track's been pretty good all um, night. You know, we've been pretty good. Uh, hopefully we can make something happen in the race and, you know, come out with a win. There you go right there. Looking for something special good in luck. row number two. We'll pass the mic around to some of these drivers. We'll have another Louisiana driver joining us, Shane Hebert. I've heard your name all over Texas and beyond. Thank you for joining us. What does the third row look like right now? What do you think of this track? Uh, track looks pretty good. I, I think it's going to be uh, racy here in a little bit. So hopefully uh, my plan is to uh, pass four cars and take the checker flag first. There you go. Pass four cars and take the checkered flag. That, that maybe is more of a plan than anybody else had at the moment. Other than our buddy Brandon, just hoping to stay in clean air. Let's see who's next. The 32, Mr. Bo Begnod from Spring, Texas. Thanks for joining us. Hey, what sort of adjustments did you make on this car from the heat race, and do you think you made the right adjustments now that you see the track? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we were a little tight in the heat race, so uh, it looks like the track uh, came our way a little bit, and it uh, looks like hopefully we made the right adjustments, and give what the track takes us and uh, ready to get this winter series kicked off. There you go, man. I'm, I'm super excited for the winter series as well. My eyes lit up when I saw late models racing deep into the season. Once again, thanks, Mr. Owen, for putting this together along with all your buddies. Man, I love me some late models. Always good to see them kick around here on I-37. Number five, Ryan McDonald, probably the uh, the shortest haul maybe from Floresville, Texas. Mr. Ryan, good to see you up here and competing with the rest of these guys. No, wait. He, he doesn't want to talk. Oh, he don't want to talk. All right, well, I don't want to talk to you either. No, I'm just kidding. Good to see you. 
Ryan. And uh, let's see, number four, Newton Barda from Lytle, Texas. Hey, this is like your second race in this car. What are you looking forward to in this car tonight? Um, I guess the first night we came out in this car, we had a little issue with the wall. So um, I'm just looking forward to staying off the wall and just kind of running clean and uh, see what the guys up front and give me. If they give me some room, I'll try and make some moves on them. But I just want to have a real nice clean race and put on a good show for the fans. There you go. Uh, no Ross Chastaining tonight, not here at I-37. We won't have any of that. Uh, but stay off the front wall as best you can, and if you gotta, you know, if you gotta scrape it a little bit, that's okay. But uh, we hope you stay clear. Uh, let's see who's next down there. Is that uh, is that my buddy Jamie? Jamie Campbell out of Lavernia, Texas. Uh, how's your kiddo doing, Jamie? What's that? How's your kiddo doing? She's doing good. She's, uh, <laughs> she couldn't she couldn't keep up and uh, watch the feature. She's uh, asleep on the couch. Uh, I'm sure she's asleep right now. But hey, bud, you did really good. Uh, top three in your heat race. What are you looking for tonight as you're sitting mid pack and looking at this track right now? So I, I worked on the car last night until about 11, and then worked on it a little bit before work this morning. And at noon, I didn't even want to race. I didn't. Even, I was too tired. <laughs> and Got out, got in the pits about 7:05, I think tonight, and uh, it's been a good night. The crew, the crew's been, uh, my guys have been helping me, and we we just been going through the car a little bit, and everything's good. There you go. Well, hey, I'll glad you, glad you decided to come out and race, man. You look pretty good in the heat race. You're sitting mid pack now, so good luck to you. Keep it clean. Maybe these guys will get out of your way. Let's see who's next. The number nine, some some guy named Ray Doyon. I don't know if I should talk to this guy. Ray, what's up, buddy? How you feeling tonight? <laughs> He's asleep in the car. Bro, I hope that whoever's had an injury is okay, first of all. Yeah. Hopefully they're okay and we can get this show on. Thank you, everybody, coming out. Uh, it's awesome to see this many late models this late in the season. And uh, we apologize for the... Beginning of the night with a heavy, heavy track, and <laughs> now we got a dust bowl. What the heck? <laughs> well, I, I mean, I got to tell you what, the top and the bottom look pretty good. You might still have a little bit of moisture out there, but I don't know if that's going to happen after the first few laps. But uh, I'm going to go try to find some and hopefully not tear anybody up. There you go. It's on your way to find some moisture. Good luck, Ray. Hope you do all right out there. Keep it clean. Don't let your temper get the best of you. <laughs> All right, let's see who else. That's uh, the number 99, Nate Jantz out of Alsdorf, Texas. Nate, man, you had a little mix-up in the heat race, but you were coming on late in the heat race. It looked like you really found something out there. With all the, the difference in all the races in the track now, what, what do you think this track looks like? Did you make the right adjustments? Uh, I tightened up the car quite a bit, and uh, by the looks of it, I hope I'm not too tight. But the promoter told me if I'd start clear at the back, he'd pay me 3000 bucks to win this thing tonight. So that's what I'm contemplating right now. What do you guys think? Oh, buddy. A start from the back challenge, that would be awesome to see. And I got to tell you, the way that you made moves in that heat race, I think you got a chance at it. $3,000? We'll, we'll give it our best. There you go. Man, that's going to be interesting to see. Nate Jantz out of Alsdorf, Texas. Looking forward to seeing what you can do. Another one of our local guys here, the 53 of Matt Fox, coming down from Kerrville. Matt, good to see you again, buddy. Hey, you got this uh, new-ish late model to you, and it looks like you finally got it dialed in. What do you think about it tonight? Uh, we've been working on it quite a bit. Uh Pretty sure we got it dialed in. Uh, feel pretty comfortable about it. Uh, had a lot of help from Cody Hardage and Pierce Race Car Chassis. There you go. Good to feel comfortable in your car, especially you know on a late night like tonight. Uh, looks like you got a long way to go, though. What are you looking for making your way up to the front? Uh, it's going to be pretty difficult. This is a pretty stacked field. Um, just try to move forward. Yep. There you go. Just try to move forward one one car at a time. Keep it clean. Let's see who we got here. The 717 GW Egbert. Hey, buddy. It's good to talk to you again. How's it going? 
Pretty good, man. Good to see this bright yellow and black car out here again. Uh, well, you've done it once here at I-37. You know how to get around this place. How's the track look tonight compared to what you were used to last time? Uh, I like the track right now. I, uh, I struggled a little bit early on. Um, I think it's going to be a good race. I'd like to get up there a little bit closer to the front and watch these guys battle for a win. There you go. Good to see you again, Mr. GW. Thanks for good coming to race with us. Good Love coming down here and racing. Thanks for all the fans coming out. Yes, sir. We've got some real stout fans right now, especially braving a little bit of a cool, chilly uh, wind breeze right now. I'm, I'm getting a little shivery myself, but uh, it's quite nice compared to what we're used to. All right, let's see who we got here. Uh, is that the 47, Mr. Jeffrey Abbey? Maybe? If yeah. he wants to talk to me, that's okay. Yeah, you know. can you hear me now? Yeah, there we go. It, we're getting a little far away uh, from our, our uh, radio transmitter tower, but thanks for talking to me. Hey, man, you were, you were throwing up some of the fastest uh, lap times in the heat races, but yeah. somehow you're starting in the back. Yeah, what are you looking a, forward to? <laughs> yeah, we had us a pretty good draw. Uh, unfortunately, we took the green and the uh, car went run. We were having some fuel issues. I was hoping we'd hang on to the top four so we'd have to run a B main there, but uh, finished fifth, uh, ran the B there, and got it running. So uh, we're, we're buried pretty deep here, but we were planning to work through here. Hopefully, hopefully the track stays pretty wide and we can race our way up to the front. There you go. That's what we're hoping for, too. We're hoping to see two and three wide racing, but uh, you got your work cut out for you. Good luck to you tonight. We know that you're fast. We'll just hope that you keep it clean all the way through and maybe make your way to the front. Let's see. What's the number on that one down there? 25? Robbie Starr. It's from Baytown, Texas. One of the only racers to come north. Kind of. Kind of north. Anyway. Robbie, how's it look from your perspective down there? You got a lot of cars in front of you. What's your plan tonight? Uh, just stay out of trouble and uh, that's the main thing. And then uh, just run consistent laps and uh, I think everything else will take care of itself so there you go sometimes that's all you got to do is just be patient let everybody take take themselves out of it and uh you know somehow you wind up on the top of the mountain at the end of the night but hey good luck to you thanks again for uh coming up and racing with us that 25 machine is fast we'll look to see how far you can move forward all right thank you all right let's see who else Got the 12 out there. Is the 12? Is that Cody? No, who is it? 12, Cody. 12, Cody. Cody, what do you think about this many late models on a track like this? How does it feel to put uh, something like this together? I'm glad all these guys showed up. I'm glad the fans are here. Hopefully, the ones at home are still watching. Uh, looks like we've got a pretty good track. Uh, we're going to try to keep our nose clean here and see if we can stay on the lead lap before the leaders get to us and hopefully catch a caution and go forward. There you go. Well, good luck, buddy. It sounds like we're getting this thing underway. Thanks for racing with us. Thanks for helping put this thing together. Man, I'm so excited to get these guys around this track. Somebody throw a green flag. I need it. I need it in my veins. These cars have a, a little bit of a different smell to them. Some of them running methanol, some of them running E85, maybe a few guys running race gas. <laughs> that might be a little bit of Owen passing gas as he walked by me, I don't know. There's some, uh, some different odors going on tonight. <laughs> Alcohol. That methanol burning is uh, a little different smell for sure. We're just only thing we got that runs at some uh, modifieds, which we'll have tomorrow night, right, Chris? Yeah, looking forward to adding the modifieds in tomorrow night. I think it's something like a thousand dollars to win modifieds. So good to be uh, good to have the modifieds back out here for one more race, the final race of the I-37. For this season, anyway. But man, nice, cool breeze. We got these late models firing up right in front of us. I don't know that there's a much better place to be on a Friday night. 
We're going to kick these guys around the track and get it going. Once again, thanks for your patience. Thanks for hanging with us through the morning. I know it's 1244. I know it's late. Go home and get some sleep and come back tomorrow night and finish this thing off right. All right, here we go. On a pole, that's Dean Abbey in the 26. Outside, Brandon Brzezowski in the 104. Inside, Kevin sitting in the 1, the 78. Wyatt Wilkerson. The 9X is Shane Bear right there on the inside of row number 3. Outside him in the 32 is going to be Bo Becknog. Row 4, the 5, Ryan McDonald in the 4, Newton Barda. Row 5, the 29 of Jamie Campbell. The 9 of Ray Doyon. Row 6, the 99 of Nate Jantz. And a 53X of Matt Fox. Row 7, the 717 GW Egbert, the B main winner. And outside in the 47, Jeffrey Abbey. Row 8, 25, Robbie Starnes, the 12 of Cody Hardage. Row 9, the 7 of Rhett Starnes, the 75 of Anthony Boatman. Row 10, your final row, the 19, Barry Quaid and the 1X, Andrew Hessler. Here we go, guys. Getting them warmed up, getting them ready. Get a little oil temperature in them, a little water temperature in them. Make a couple laps here. We'll be ready to go wrap this thing up. Thank you for sticking around and watching some racing with us tonight. Hope you enjoy the late model show. We'll have a bigger show even tomorrow night. So uh, please come back and enjoy. Here at I-37 Speedway, we're going to have another great night of racing. Tomorrow night, the DTK. Showing them one, lights out. Showing them one. Here we go. Showing them one, lights are out. Track even changed more, I can promise you. We sit and wait and sit and wait and let it dry, let it dry, let it dry. Uh, eee, see what we get here. Hopefully we get a couple of grooves to play with. All right, buckle them up. Here we go. It's what you've been waiting for right here. Abby Brzezowski. Here we go. Good clean start. Yeah, uh, so much went for the good clean start. You jinxed us, Owen. Man. Good clean start. Starnes, Jamie Campbell involved. 1X of Andrew Hessler involved. The 75, Anthony Boatman involved. Well, I know I was excited. I think the drivers got real excited too. Maybe a little bit of dust, hard to see where everybody's going, and uh, and here we are. Hopefully not too much damage but uh i see cars it's being like the, yeah it looks like the four newton barter right the four newton barter way up there in the wall i don't know how he got involved with those way back there he was outside row number four uh not good yeah we talked to newton a, mi a minute ago and he said he was trying to stay off of the front stretch wall friends lifelong friends but the nine got in his left for a little bit turned him down the track into uh, another car in the infield or on the inside and then turned him back around to the outside uh, and then collected by many cars so uh, tough break for Newton Barta he he had some high hopes and he did not want to get into the wall tonight and where'd he wind up you, you talked to him about that so you jinx that one yeah maybe I did looks like he's under his own power now getting around the track will uh See if he's able to continue. 
but uh, maybe want to be a little bit of a fly on the wall when he and Ray have that conversation later tonight. Looks like he's going to kick it off into the pits. Uh, night done. Yeah, I think, I think Newton got way up there in the dusty stuff and uh, did not help him at all in that situation. So let's try this again, folks. Those of y'all still awake tonight watching, uh, thanks for watching Race on Texas. Chuck Perry, shout out Chuck Perry and family there uh, hanging out there in Corpus Christi watching. Uh, hopefully we got plenty of y'all still watching. We got plenty still here in the stands checking it out. A lot of drivers and uh, crew members come up here to hang with us, so thank you guys. Let's see if we can't get some laps in here. All right, with Jamie Campbell pulling back on the track wheel. Still have 19 cars. Newton Bart is the only car we do not have at this point, so. The 53X, Matt Fox looking to have some problems as you see him way in the back here on the outside. Uh, not sure what's going on with Matt Fox there. Uh, yeah, heavy, obviously some heavy damage. But now you see the 47 of Abby all the way up to uh, outside row number five. You got to figure uh, GW Egbert's going, hey, man, how'd he get way up there? Well, <laughs> had cars in front of him pulling out, so uh, there's your opportunity. Yeah, it looked like uh, Fox was waving the drivers on. I'm not sure if that means he... Uh wants to start further back or what but uh interesting decision cotton we'll see how it plays out for him all right lights out let's do it again folks here we go shout out to my buddy steve grants watching still uh from up north i think he's in probably in salado or somewhere up there so uh steve grants watching tonight so Y'all give me a text, I'll give you a shout out. Here we go. Abby and Brzezowski try it again. Another good, clean, side-by-side -side go. Dean Abby quickly out front in the 26. Here comes Kevin sitting in the one. Brzezowski still hung on the outside. Here comes the night of Shane Hebert. Gonna take over third. Everybody clean and green. Here we go. Abair up to second now. Brzezowski still hung on the outside here. Let's see if they can find something on that outside line. Right now, Dean Abbey roll at the bottom, just trying to drive away and hide. But I tell you what, Abair on the bottom there in that nine, sitting in the 178. Wyatt Wilkerson right there as well. Brzezowski still working the middle to the top move. Oh, problems for Egbert. He goes through the end He's going to stay on the gas. He's still rolling. GW Egbert in the 717, still rolling. 29 of Jamie Campbell shuffling something off the back straightaway. Looked like he was hung on a tire or something. I saw some white go flying off the back straightaway. He is clean and green and going still. Right now, Abby rolling the bottom. Brzezowski still on the outside, chasing down forward. Brzezowski going to have to move down, I think. Dean Abbey way out there. Shane Abair. Kevin Sitton, your top three. Brandon Brzezowski right there in fourth. Bo Begnog now in fifth, moving his way to the front. Wilkerson, Wyatt Wilkerson in that 78, and then all over him is a 47 of Jeffrey Abbey. So, got a good race. I tell you what, right now, Abbey's going to be dealing, Dean Abbey's going to be dealing with some lap traffic in just a matter of moments here as he's running down in the back of our pack. GW Eberk on the move down the back straightaway on the inside of the 75 here. He's picking off cars one after the other. Nate Jansen at 99, still trying to go forward. I don't think his $3,000 payday is coming. Here comes Egbert on the inside of Jantz. 29 of Campbell goes high. Matt Fox in the 53. Oh, Paul is between Abby. No, look out. Leader around. Leader gets into the lap car. Lap car held up our leader there, and uh, lap car goes around. Twenty-nine of 
49, and Campbell goes high. Matt Fox in the 53. Oh, Paul is between Abby. No, look out. Leader around. Leader gets into the lap car. Lap car held up our leader there, and uh, lap car goes around. Right there in second, sitting the 10-4 of Brzezowski and the 32 of Begnog. Well, how about that? I, uh, I just unclenched my jaw. Uh, that was awesome. <laughs> I got to say, uh, Owen, it's great that you're here announcing with me, buddy, because I, I don't know that I could uh, call all of the action that was happening all around the track. I was just looking left and right and left and right, and these guys are just all over the track tearing it up. Yeah, I tell you what, tracks, tracks looks like it's starting to lock down on the bottom. Concerns me about doing a double file restart. Uh, it's really not fair to the guys on the outside when the track is in this condition that the outside uh, hurts you. So we'll uh, I'll try to have a talk with the crew here. Yeah, I noticed the 10-4 uh, the of Brzezowski kind of got pinned on the outside uh, on a couple of those restarts and, and really just did not work for him. He finally made his way back down to the bottom where he was able to hold his position better. Uh, but I was watching my buddy Brandon and really the outside was just not working. So Yeah, I just got a, just got a text from my man, Rodney Rodriguez, uh, the, the voice, I tell you what. Uh, he's uh, watching us tonight. He's uh, enjoying this thing. He says getting a little Western, getting a little exciting. So uh, Rodney Rodriguez is tuning in, dude. He's probably watching what you're doing down there, Chris. I don't know about that, man. He's, I, I'm just looking left and right and trying to, to do my best to process what's going on in my brain, much less spit it out of my mouth. But, uh, but I tell you what, the 28 of Abby, uh, just firmly in control. He, he quickly was able to find a line that he could drive and, uh, and just held on to it. Uh, I'm curious to see what the nine of A Bear is going to do on the outside right now. That may open the door for the ten for a Brzezowski who moves on the bottom. So it'll be interesting to see what this top five is going to get shuffled into as we have our next restart. Yeah, I tell you, right now that's a major problem to me because the bottom is locked down. We're going to go single file. We're asking them to go single file. Wow. Well, we're showing them on. I guess they're not going to listen to me. I ask, uh, we ask him to go single file because the track is no good. It's a uh, lockdown on the bottom here, so we prefer to be single file at this point, but the track's making this decision to go double up and go here, so uh, let's hope for the best here. All right, we'll see how it goes. I got Dean Abbey out front. Got a blinking yellow still. We uh, still need to sort some things out, it appears. Looks like they may have got the message. We'd prefer them to go single file here. I know it's a long ways back when you're running about 18th or 19th, but we got to be fair to second, third, fourth, everybody else, and uh, make sure we, we go clean. We watched that limited race. Some cars got kind of strung out there on the outside and didn't have an opportunity to uh, finish where they really deserved to finish. So this is uh, my choice, and the racers can complain to me all they want, but this is how I want to run the, the race is we're going to go single file if the track is locked down. If we had two good grooves, one on the outside, Chris, we'd be going two grooves in, in double file all night long. But I tell you what, at this point, this is kind of what we need to do to be fair to all our competitors. Yeah, I mean, hey, you do what you can. You do the best with what you got. Sometimes the track and Mother Nature just does not play into your favor. So, you know. We do what we think is best for the racers and, and most honorable to, you know, what racing is all about. And hey, sometimes it just happens this way. I don't think anybody's gonna chew your ear off there, but uh, we do our I, best. I agree. I think we're we're ready to go here. I think Flagman, yeah, Flagman gonna show him one to go this time by. One to go this time by. All right, we're going to give him a good, clean start here, single file. See, 
honest, fair thing to do to give them all an opportunity to uh, not wreck each other's stuff or have problems. Yep. And uh, now that we have a better idea of what Mother Nature is going to do tomorrow and night, it, we'll have a better idea of what to do with the track to make this as good as we can. So once again, join us again tomorrow night. Lights are out. Here we go on Dean Abbey in the 26. Abby opened the door there to get this thing going, allowed Abair on the inside, but Dean Abby going to drive away from him in the 26 now. We got us a good clean start. We rolled out, no problems on the restart there, single file. Abby still out front. He's starting to pull away from Abair, sitting there in third. Hit for Brazowski in fourth, Begnog fifth. Keep an eye on the 717, still on the move, headed forward. He's right behind Jeffrey Abbey at this point. Cody Hardage going to fall back another spot. Ray Doyon way up at the top, trying the top side of the nine back here in the back. Keep an eye. We got him about three wide coming out here. Ray Doyon working the outside. He's going to make about four car pass right there coming out of four. As Dean Abbey continues to drive away here, Abair second, third's gonna go to Sitton. We got a good battle with the 10-4 and the 32 of Begnog and Brzezowski right there for fourth and fifth. 47 to Jeffrey Abbey. We got one there in the front stretch wall. Look like the 75, kind of doing a little sparkity spark down the front straightaway there. Once again, Abbey's gonna be dealing with lap traffic in a matter of minutes as he's on the same straightaway as them. Down the back straightaway. We still got Chance out here. He said he's going to race her 3,000 from the back, and he's racing, I tell you, but he's not going forward. Three wide down the back straightaway right here. Chance on the inside. Here comes the 717. I tell you what, him and, and Abby have uh, moved forward. They got past the 78 of Wilkerson, who started way ahead of them. Hart is now going to work on Wilkerson in that 78 car. Meanwhile, out front, we got lap traffic all in front of the 26 of Dean Abbey. Almost a straightaway back to Shane Abair, then half a straightaway to Sitton, and then we're back to the 10-4 and the 32 battling with five laps to go. We got five to go. Here we go. Wilkerson, Wyatt Wilkerson, that 78, going to go to the top, see what he can do out there. A lot of dust up there on the top side, so he's not going to go anywhere that way. You can count on that. As he's doing his best, though, i tell you what, he's hanging right there. The 25 of Robbie Starr and starting to work on the 12 of Cody Hardage right behind Wilkerson. They got a battle here. Abair trying to make his way through lap traffic as Dean Abbey continues just to drive away with this deal. Coming up on two to go here. Two to go for the 26 of Dean Abbey. Looking to pick up the first race win, $1,000 here, plus uh, the lead in the $7,000 points fund season. So Coming to the white flag, white flag right here. Dean Abbey in the 26, white flag. Three turns left for the 26. Out of Boyd, Texas, taking home the first win of the Winter Series of 2022. We got cars all in front of him. Coming to the checkered right here. Your winner's going to be Dean Abbey in the 26. Second's going to go to Shane Abair in the nine. Third will go to Kevin Sitton in the one. Fourth will go to the 10-4, Brandon Brzezowski. Fifth will go to the 32 of Bo Bednar. Shout out to Robert Wyman, still watching there at the lake, man. I tell you what, uh, Eddie Ross, them guys are uh, having a good time at College Station. Thank you folks for coming out. Thanks for hanging and watching our late models. We really appreciate each and every one of you uh, coming to the racetrack. Tomorrow night we have a bigger show, 2,000 to win, 200 to start tomorrow night. So uh, again, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, 
Hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you enjoyed the late models. That's what we brought them for, so y'all can have a great show and enjoy something different. So we appreciate each and every one of you. We're going to get down there and talk to Dean Abbey just a bit. Man, I tell you what. Again, I just unclenched my jaw. That was, that was spectacular. One caution. We had one caution. Just one. Car. We had one caution. Had to get through that. But I tell you what, when you get this quality of driver, Chris, in this field of cars, you're not going to have a lot of cautions. Knock on wood. We got a big race tomorrow night. Uh, knock on you're wood. You're going to have a lot of great racing. That's what we had tonight. Yes, sir. Dean Abbey in the 26 with the benefactor of starting on the front row. Jumped out to the early lead and just never looked back. We'll talk to Dean in just a second. Yeah. Hey, before y'all leave, uh, give him a round of applause. Dean Abbey, your winner. Yes, sir. Dean, uh, let me see. Here, I'm going to tell you how it is. It's 105, so it's a little late for the fans. Few, few of them stuck around to watch you win this deal. Hey, a uh, little lap traffic problem there at one point. Uh, give us give us your thought process running in there, man. You you pretty much had a straightaway on them, and you run up on a lap car. Uh, give us a little bit about that. Man, you know, you don't ever know how big a lead you have, and he kind of opened up the door down there, so I filled the hole, and then he come back down, and I got on the brakes, but I got into him a little bit. Uh, uh, it's just part of it, you know. Uh, you, you got to try to get through lap track as quick as you can. I've lost a lot of races there. Uh, so, you know, I know everybody who races lost races in lap traffic, and I thought that might happen at the end there, but uh, it worked out today. Yeah, I tell you what, you, you handled lap traffic late in the race a lot better than that one. And, and not that you did anything wrong there. He, he kind of come across your nose. You were, you were like, I can imagine what's going through your mind, like, holy cow. And then I was like, man, I hope his car's okay because you're putting on a hell of a race. A-Bear gave you a little run right off of that restart. We only had one caution, thankfully. That's what we want. Minimize our cautions. Have some great race. And A-Bear gave you a run. What was the thought process going coming out of four there as A-Bear gets on your inside? Uh, you know, I knew Shane was going to be good. Uh, I know he made contact down there. I didn't even know he was there. So uh, I got to talk to him about that, but that's probably on me. So, uh, But it is what it is. It was a good race. I'm uh, um, just glad we were able to get it done. Absolutely. So uh, picking up the first win, uh, All-Star Crate Late Model Winter Series. I know you're uh, hoping to be able to make as many or all these that you can, make some money and, and have some fun with us. So we appreciate you making the long haul. Who helps you get the long haul done? I know you got a lot of names on the car. I, I announced all these guys earlier. Uh, tell them yourself, though. Yeah, uh, Paul Miller Custom Pools. They, uh, they're my. He, he, uh, he's my boss, and uh, he helps me out when he can, and he uh, lets me get off work to come racing. Uh, Dynamic Drive Lines, you know, they help me out where they can. Um, Andy Sprinkler Service, you know, they help me out uh, just everywhere they can. Everybody who's a part of this team, my wife for letting me come, my little boy, um, he made the trip down here with me. Uh, he's some crew chief this weekend. I bet he's already asleep though. He's pretty tired earlier. Um, everybody who's a part of this team, Dirt Defender, Muirhead Motorsports, uh, just everybody. Uh, my brother, he and my brother's racing. He rode down with me. Um, his wife, she's uh, kind of helping with the bay with Sawyer and my little boy. Uh, but just everybody who's a part of this team. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you what, I saw you and the boy riding around the four wheeler earlier. Uh, that's what it's all about to me. That's more important family. And when you bring them here to the racetrack, there's nothing better than a bond. Hey, Chris, you got anything you want to ask? Mr. Abbey, before I uh, let him go, buddy? No, man, I just got to say good luck tomorrow night. Thanks for racing with us. You put on a show for us, and I'm looking forward to another one tomorrow. All right, man, I appreciate it. Like I said, I appreciate the track letting us come race with us. And everybody, I know it's a, it's a big group effort to make this happen. I know uh, the series is new. We appreciate you giving us the opportunity to come race with you all. Yeah, I got one more question real quick. Tomorrow we time in, okay? Tonight we drew. You had a good number, good draw. Tomorrow you time in. Different mindset, different thought. What do you go home and go home? What do you go to the hauler and work on, prepare for timing in tomorrow? Uh, you know, we, we're we just going to go with the same uh, game plan we did tonight, you know, to try to do everything we can to keep up with the racetrack. Um, big thing with timing in is just going to be kind of see what we have with the racetrack when it's time and try to make the right decisions on what we bring, bring out to qualify with. Absolutely. Well, good luck tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Hell of a win. It really seems like with sport mods and so forth, it's top-notch competition. It is a different driving style there for the Derby. We, we talk to them all the time all over the country. And yes, great show coming up. Congratulations all the race winners.